It is 4.02 p.m. Uh, we are here having this hearing via virtual WebEx. The next month, next commission monthly business meeting will be 12 noon, Tuesday, October 20th, uh, 2020. That'll be via WebEx. The next commission hearing will be 4 p.m. Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. That will also be a virtual hearing via WebEx. Go ahead and we'll swear in staff. Staff, please raise your right hands. Jacqueline, is that you? Do you swear to tell the truth? Thank you for your truth? Sorry. Do you swear oh, to tell the truth? Okay. I just heard you. The whole truth, nothing but the truth. All right. I, and your name for the record? Jacqueline Lehman. This is, uh, Jacqueline Thank Lehman. you very much. Gotcha. Please, a little bit of, little bit of the light. Also, I'll note that we are live on YouTube now. Great. Thanks, Sarah. All right, uh, we'll move on to the introduction of commissioners who are present. I am Anthony Hartke, Chair. Commissioner Thiel. Present. Commissioner Durst. Present. Commissioner Ferriel. Present. And do we have Commissioner McCoy or Commissioner Foley yet? All right, neither one of those two are in attendance currently, and Commissioner Panzer is will not be attending. Uh, we'll move on to approval of minutes from Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. I move to approve the minutes. Second. All right. We have a motion for Commissioner Thiel and a second for Commissioner Durst. Are there any questions on the motion? Take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Thiel. Commissioner Thiel, your vote. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Moving on to items for public forum. Jacqueline, any items for public forum? No items for public forum. Thank you. We'll move on to the approval of staff approvals, which start on page seven. We're looking for any recusals from the commissioners present? Uh, Chairman, I have to recuse myself from GV 2010-24-628 Mohawk, GV 20-10-25, same address, and I think, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. I believe there are no other recusals. So. No further, no further recusals. Is there a motion? Uh, Chairman, I move to ratify the uh, staff approvals. There's a motion from Commissioner Thiel. Is there a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Ferriel. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor, I'll take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. And chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it, motion passes. Moving on to the application for certificates of appropriateness. Uh, item one is GV-20-10-036, Schiller Park. Jacqueline? Sure, okay, so this uh, first project, existing a non-historic playground fence for the Schiller Park top lot. Uh, the existing fence had led to a child head entrapment incident and concern, so the fence has been temporarily remediated with construction fencing over the existing fence. Uh, so the applicant would like to replace that existing fence with a new fence of the same material and color that's closely matching the existing design, and they would like to add a top rail to address that potential head entrapment issue. Um, so staff analysis, the existing fence is not historic and the alteration for safety purposes of this non-historic fence is minimal and keeping with the existing materials and design, the so staff does recommend approval. And just as a recap on the applicant materials, uh, the last page shows that they're basically adding, uh, the new design will be basically a, a, a bar across the top to prevent uh, children's heads from falling in between those rounded hoops. Otherwise, I think it pretty much follows with the typical fencing we've seen. 
Any questions or comments from the commission? If there are none, is there a motion? Um, no, go ahead. I move on application GB-20-10-36 Schiller Park to approve the application as submitted. Second. All right, we got a motion for Commissioner Durst, a second for Commissioner Ferial. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferial? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it, motion passes. All right, we will move on to agenda item number two. GV-20-10-037, 170 East Frankfurt Street. Uh, we're looking for Kelly Tuttle or another applicant. Hi, it's me. Okay. So. All right, Ms. Tuttle, if you raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Kelly Tuttle. Thank you very much. Jacqueline? So this to uh, code violation. The applicant has replaced some broken fence panels as well as replaced broken crumbling crumbling patio pavers in a broken block wall. Uh, some co commissioner feedback at the last business meeting. It was located within the fencing. If the so-called good side of the fence was public as opposed to facing inward. And the commissioners that the photos seem to be showing the good side possibly facing and approval conditions that the fence should be confirmed to be facing towards the public and that verifications are needed regarding what changes were made to the existing hardscape, if any. Thank you, Jacqueline. Now you broke up a little bit, but I think we got uh, the gist of what you were stating there. Okay. Uh, so, Ms. Tuttle, are we able to speak to any of the items that Jacqueline had mentioned? Uh, yeah, I am. The um, the block wall that you see in the picture, um, the exact same pavers were used, not the exact same ones, but the same type were used. They are inside the fence, and the good side of the fence is out towards the public. Okay. Questions or comments from the commission? If there's no questions or comments, is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, on item GV20-10-037, I move to approve as submitted. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Thiel, a second by Commissioner Durst. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Eyes have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Ms. Tuttle. All right, we'll move on to item number three. That is GV-20-10-038-874 Mohawk Street. Looking Anthony, for... Anthony, I just, yes. want to let, just want to let you know I'm here. This is Commissioner Foley showing up late. Thank you very much. Let the record show Commissioner Foley is now in attendance. Uh, all right, so for item three, we are looking for uh, the applicant, Jason Kober or Isabel Billet. Kobel, Jason Kobel, I'm here. Jason Kobel. All right, uh, looking to see if your camera pops up. There's your camera. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Jason Kobel. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application uh, involves proposed landscaping, including adding drainage to the side and rear areas, including a French drain in the rear and an NDS slope channel drain on the side of the house. The applicant also adds to add landscape lighting, replace some trees, shrubs on the side, and in the back gardens. Um, and some existing trees in some spaces are lifting brick and are close to foundations, which is why they would like to replace them. The applicant would like to add some replacement trees uh, instead of the existing ones and also level out the existing walkways and patio areas from the existing tree roots. Uh, the applicant has submitted an updated drawing indicating lighting and tree locations in response to the commissioner feedback from the September 22nd business meeting. And staff generally recommends approval uh, with conditions that the proposed lighting will be consistent with standards for site improvement and that replacement trees will be consistent with replacing the existing tree types. 
Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Mr. Coble, do you have anything to add? Um, unless you have any questions about the tree uh, uh, types that we're going to re replace them with. Um, not really. All right. Uh, then we'll open up to the commission. Questions or comments? Give the commissioners a second to digest that, uh, that new page there at the end. And uh, I'd like to thank the applicant for providing the added materials. That's what we're looking for. All right, if there are no questions or comments from the commission, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Commissioner Ferriel uh, with respect to uh, agenda item number three, application GV 20-10.038 at 874 Mohawk Street, move to adopt as submitted. Approve as submitted. Second. All right, second, Commissioner Durst. Are there any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Thank you. Moving on to item number four, GV-20-09-011546, City Park Avenue. This is a continued application. We're looking for Scott Remus or Greg Oliver. I see Scott Greg out there. Remus. Mr. Remus, would you please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Scott Remus. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, so this application was continued from the last hearing. Uh, the applicant has made some revisions in response to the feedback received at that hearing, including the fact that the iron fence and gating will now be retained and repaired, that the wall to the south of the steps will be retained with a new purge coat added, and the replacement wall to the north of the steps will match the existing wall to the south of the steps in appearance and dimensions, including the parge coat. That a new limestone coping will add it and will match the existing uh, coping. And that a new section drawing has been submitted. Staff does recommend approval of the application as revised. All right. Uh, Mr. Remus, do you have anything else to add? No. All right. Any questions or comments from the commission? I've got one question. What is what is your detail for letting the restored fencing into the new limestone? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What is your detail for letting the restored fencing into the new limestone? For how it's going to be installed in there? Yeah, how it's going to be anchored and sealed. Uh, they're going to drill into the limestone and set it inside. Okay, and are they going to are they going to use non shrink epoxy grout or uh, yeah you know, silicone sealant or something? Yeah, the epoxy grout. Okay. All right. Commissioner Thiel, is there is there a uh, uh, preference one way or another, or any? No, not really. Both of them require maintenance and look at. I mean, as long as the, the as long as the seal's good and water doesn't get in there, it won't pop the limestone. But as soon as they get water in there, you're going to lose your top stone again, like like the like the picture show. Gotcha. I just want to make sure the applicant had understood the the, the line of questioning. But uh, yeah. Yep. I do. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, item number four, GV twenty dash oh nine zero eleven. 540 City Park Avenue. I move to approve as submitted. And thanks for the revisions. Second. Second. Uh, we'll give the second to Commissioner Ferriel there. Mr. chimed in first. Uh, we'll take the vote. Or actually, any questions on the motion? Now we'll take the vote. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Th Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Uh, the chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. All right. We will move on to item number five, GV-20-08-032-796 Mohawk Street. Looking for uh, Catherine Mikes. Mikes? Or another applicant? 
Anthony, Chair, and I have to recuse myself from this. All right, thank you, Commissioner Thiel. Uh, looking for an applicant for 796 Mohawk Street. All right, Jacqueline, set this one aside and come back to it. Let me make a note here to remember to come back. Sorry, my mute button was freezing. And to, just to check, we were expecting an applicant for this one, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. We have right. information if they uh, aren't able to or read it. Okay, we'll table this one for the time being. We'll come back to it. Uh, hopefully they attend. If not, okay. we'll look at then. All right, we'll move ahead to new applications. Uh, item number six, uh, the GV-20-10-039-192 East Beck Street. I'll let the record show Commissioner Thiel uh, back on. Uh, looking for applicant Eleanor Alvarez or other. We have an applicant for 192 East Beck Street. I'm pretty certain this applicant did confirm that they would be attending. Okay. You can put this one on the table as well and come back to it. Okay. Yes. You might be just running a little fast tonight, maybe. Uh, we'll go ahead and try item number seven, GV-20-10-040. 636 Mohawk Street. Looking for the applicant, uh, Derek Unglis or other. Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself from this one. Thank you, Commissioner Thiel. Uh, looking for applicant for 636 Mohawk Street. If we're ahead of schedule and people aren't on, we're just going to make it worse as we move forward. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's put. Let's do it this way. Is there an applicant here for eight two seven City Park? Here. All right. We'll go ahead and jump to number eight. Fourth, fourth times a charm. GB two zero dash one zero dash zero four one eight two seven City Park Avenue. Let the record show. Commissioner those back on. Uh, looking for Mr. Sauer. Here. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Evan Sauer, homeowner. Thank you, Mr. Sauer. Uh, Jacqueline, go ahead. This application is to install a new pergola slash swing. Uh, the pergola swing is to be approximately six foot by six foot uh, in wood material. The swing uh, would be stained to match the door and window box color. The swing itself would be movable and installed at the side or north elevation. Uh, in response to commissioner feedback from the September 22nd business meeting, the applicant has submitted a site plan and has confirmed that two posts will be cemented into the ground, that the itself will be detachable, but the pergola will be cemented into the ground. Thank you, Jacqueline. All right, uh, Mr. Sauer, anything to add? No, I don't have anything to add. All right, uh, questions or comments from the commission? Do we have the site plan? There we go. So could you blow that up, please? So it's like seven feet back from. Is this the rear of the house or the front of the house? That is the front of the house. That city park is the front. Okay. Okay. Seven feet back from city park and roughly two feet back from the property line. Which, which is that location is indicated in the first picture. It is yeah. It, now it's seven feet from the actual sidewalk. Um, roughly another eight or so feet. So probably 15 to 20 feet from city park, the street. Okay, and how does that line up to the corner of the uh, structure next door? It is, so it is about two feet off of our property line um, towards towards our house. So our house is, is right against, you know, we have a foot in between our property line and the structure that you would see on the previous picture. Okay. I think uh, 
Pardon, that question was the, the property next to you that we're seeing in the picture is the, is the front of the prop building flush with the front of your building or is their building set back from yours? The other building is set back from ours. You know, so, is this, does, yeah, does this swing straddle that corner? The the corner of um, the front of their house? Yeah. No, it's it's on the side of their house. So if you go back to that previous picture. Yeah. You can go to the second picture, second one. There you go. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, it's not at the it's not at the corner. It's pushed back. Um, it's roughly, behind the front of roughly the three like, roughly three feet or so from that corner of their house. Yeah, I I just yeah I I'm just concerned that it's not in front of that that house. That's all. Oh no, no, it's not. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, if there are no more, is there a motion? Mr. Uh, Chairman, yep, go ahead. Christine. Okay. <laughs> I move on item 8 GV 20 10 041 827 City Park Avenue to approve the application as submitted with the clarification that the pergola posts are about three feet behind the front of the neighboring building. Second. All right, we got a motion from Commissioner Durst, second from Commissioner Ferial. Any questions on the motion? All right, take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferial? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Uh, chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we'll do a quick back check. Uh, do we have any applicants here for? 796 Mill Street. All right. Any applicant here for 192 East Beck Street? Or an applicant here for 636 Mohawk Street? All right. We'll keep moving forward. We'll go to item number nine. Uh, which is six or GV dash two zero dash one zero dash zero four two six four nine Mohawk Street. David Ellis here. There we go. Mr. Pals, if you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, David Pallas, homeowner. Thank you, Mr. Pallas. Jacqueline? Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse Mr. myself. Has from submitted this. A Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Jack. Has, oh, that's okay. Uh, so the applicant would like to replace <laughs> their garage door, and they have uh, submitted an alternate garage door since their original proposal. Uh, the two options, including the initial include the Coldplay Premium Series, lawn panels, no windows, overhead door courtyard collection. And the second option is a wood trim on flush steel construction. Uh, being in model 162A, 16 foot by 17 foot gray in color. Okay. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, you still there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, just check and see if you cut off if you were done. I wasn't sure. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Pallas, you have anything else to add? Um, no, um, the original application was for an all steel door um, based on cost and based on a higher R value than a wood door and a lifetime warranty. Uh, however, upon um, advice from Jacqueline, understand that that is not uh, um, um, something that the uh, commission would generally approve. So I did propose an alternative on her advice, a wood uh, wood applied over flush steel uh, that um, is in the mid range of price between the steel and wood and has a R value of, of 13 and a, still has a lifetime warranty. So I think that's, and I think, yeah, there's a picture up of that right now 
uh, the, uh, the the panel uh, design would closely resemble the existing panel design. Thank you for that information. Questions, comments from the commission? I'll, uh, I'll make the statement that uh, the, the staff's record comments were, were correct. Uh, we are on the lookout for oh. materials uh, that would be uh, appropriate in lieu of traditional wood or wood overlay doors. Um, we've been striking out uh, a lot lately with trying to find that uh, uh, that material or style that would uh, be historically appropriate in the village. Uh, but it's something we're actively looking for. So we do appreciate uh, the the alternate that you've provided in your application. Uh, it's something we can definitely take action on. I think today, uh, but we are we are on lookout for something alternative material wise. We just haven't found something yet. Any other commissioners have any comments or questions? And then just as a clarification, uh, the wood overlay, is that the Cloplay premium or is that a different one that you had to submit? I'm looking, to, I look through all the stuff and there's, looks like I think, I think um, the original one was called premium. This is a collection called the Courtyard Collection. It's still a co, co play, clo pay, excuse me, uh, okay. Courtyard Collection. It's described as wood trim on flush steel construction. Gotcha. That would make uh, make sense of why I'm seeing two different things. So, appreciate the clarification. You know what? I I just I I think I misspoke myself. If the manufacturer is actually overhead door on that particular one, not not club. I, I apologize for that error. Okay. If there are no questions or comments in the commission, we have a, a motion. Mr. Chairman, uh, with respect to agenda item nine, application GV 20 10 042, I move to approve as submitted. Second. Right, we have a motion by Commissioner Ferriel, a second by Commissioner Durst. Just want to make clarification that this is the courtyard collection from overhead door uh, as opposed to the clo pay, which is clo play, which is on the uh, the agenda. Correct. Right. Right. Any other questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Thiel. I have to recuse myself. That's correct. Thank you. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Quick look back. Uh, 796 Mohawk. There's an applicant for 796 Mohawk. Applicant for 192 East Beck. Applicant for 636 Mohawk. All right, we'll proceed forward. Uh, agenda item number 10, GV-20-10-043, 742 South 5th Street. Yes, my Anthony's here. There we go, great name. All right, uh, Mr. Meyer, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth? The whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Anthony Meyer. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This patient uh, proposes to install copper bevelo, the original French quarter lanterns. There would be a gooseneck, a style lantern, 30 inches in size at the south facing wall to the left of the stair leading to the front porch of the house. Uh, the lanterns will be installed by a gas certified plumber. The commissioners noted at the October 22nd business meeting that the proposed lanterns are much larger than what has been approved. Uh, so the applicant has submitted photos in response to the feedback from the commission showing some example lanterns located around the German village of size that they are currently proposing. 
Uh, staff would recommend approval with the condition that the lanterns be reduced in size to avoid standing out and remaining compatible with the building. Uh, Mr. Meyer, anything to add? No, I just I just wanted to kind of have a similar scale and size of those that are in the village. I think it's the type of item that even when speaking with Bevelo, they felt that this would be an appropriate size. And it is on an area where there's a two story, much like the ones with that provided examples of versus single story. Okay. It is an item that if things have changed, could be removed. Okay. All right, uh, questions, comments from the commission. So I, I, I'd like to comment. Um, we have approved these in the past, and as his pictures show, there are several of them out there. Did the village have gas lights back in the day? No, nobody probably could afford them down here um, as a public improvement out on the streets. Um, I, I believe the larger size is correct. Um, street lights would be of that size. Church lights are a mid century. Um, thing that developers made as a decorative item on tract housing. And I think for us to say carriage lights, which literally were the size appropriate for carriages, are not appropriate for the for on houses as a street lighting uh, overspill. So I support this. Can I jump in just for a second, commissioners? Ask that Derek can make for some reason I can't, but we're getting some feedback. Hello? Hey, could you mute yourself just until you're ready to speak? Um, we're getting some feedback, and for some reason, I'm not able to mute you from my end. Huh. Yeah, it's not connecting. The video is not connecting. That's okay. We don't need video right now. Um, but if you could see if you could just be on like a view only mode for the moment, that would help. I don't know why I can't mute. So, Jacqueline, if you could see, maybe if you can too. Sorry, you can try and keep going. I was just hearing some feedback. Yeah, for some reason that is not available for uh, next to their name in the applicant list. The yeah. participant list. Okay. Right. We can try to keep going. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Um, I I just want to make sure that that what I'm reading on the chart is correct. That the a fixture is actually sticks out from the wall almost two feet and to make sure that's not it's not going to get hit by anything as people come in and out of the door so my understanding because it would be that average height above the port in line with the door that it will not be unless someone's extremely tall i don't think it should be an issue it's also, our walkway goes, I think, greater than that distance, but you'd have to show that other pictures just to verify. I don't have that measurement. Yeah, so, Teresa, the, the height of that lantern would be even with what looks like the top of the door, roughly, give or take, but you're, already, you're coming up the steps okay. after the lantern is placed. Uh, Commissioner Baird, I continue to look at it. I don't know that that's an issue at this point. Okay. Commissioner Durst, do you have any thoughts on uh, Ned's comments about appropriateness from a historic preservationist standpoint? Um, not really, since we don't do a whole lot of residential, so we don't get into this very much. Understood. All right. If there's no further questions or comments. Is there a motion? So, Anthony, before we do that, Ed, if the I don't remember seeing historic photos of German village houses with this kinds of lights in the absence of photos of similar houses from the historic period. I don't see why we should encourage the proliferation of these lights that are historically inappropriate. Okay, I respect your opinion. I, I would ask the question to. Jeff, uh, Mr. Farrell, of if if we've approved in the past, if are, are we saying are you saying is not appropriate 
for the location? So I, I don't believe we should permit mistakes that we have made in the past to control our future behavior. And Commissioner Theo, from your standpoint, you don't believe it is a mistake? Is that what I understood from you saying? Oh, I, I'm not saying it's not a mistake. I'm just saying that to deny this would be arbitrary and capricious based on our previous uh, behavior. So, so Ned, I arbitrary and capricious, it's not arbitrary and capricious to turn your back on a precedent for a reason grounded in historic preservation, sound historic preservation principles. Jeff, I don't know how you can say no. I really don't. I mean, it's none of them are appropriate. Um, That's how. That's how. They're not historically appropriate. Um, but I, I'm not going to say no to this guy because, number one, I've got one on my house. And, the, and this commission approved it. And it's, it's, and it's this big. Well, that puts you in an awkward spot. And that's why I made my stand the way I did. And that goes for the ones on Beck. It goes for the ones on Third. Whether they're carriage lights or whether they're street lamp size. I, I hate to tell you how many we've got. And we've got ones that don't even resemble this that are modern ones on Fifth and on this street. Well, so that's what I'm concerned about is the continued proliferation of them. I would say, well, I, think it's a, vote. I think it is such a, a, I think it's a piece of the language of the village now. I think each commissioner should vote their conscience on it at that point. Yeah. So, any other questions or comments? Is there a motion? Um, on item GV 20 10 043, I move to approve as submitted. Second. All right. We have a, a motion by Commissioner Thiel, a second by Commissioner Durst. We'll go ahead and we'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner, or any questions on the motion first? All right. We'll take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? No. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes no. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, I think I had seen on there. Uh, first off, we have 796 Mohawk Street. Catherine Micahs. Do we have 192 East Beck Street? All right. Uh, 636 Mohawk Street, Mr. Unglis. I'm having trouble with my video for some reason. Apologize. I hope my voice is enough. Can you hear me okay? Uh, we, we do need to have video in order to take testimony. Oh, gosh. Um, I also see that you're on here twice. Do you, can you try stopping one of those two connections? Okay, so we've got one. That's, that's good. Well, Am I up? No, but it's starting to look better was just a black screen and now it's the regular empty video screen. The start video button towards the bottom panel of your uh hmm. Uh, Mr. Douglas, can you try maybe just disconnecting from the, the meeting altogether and coming back in? Yeah, I'll come back in. I don't. I'm, I'm using Safari. Is that an issue? Couldn't be. Yeah, yeah not that we're me, aware. Um, I'll close out. I'll come back. I apologize. Just put me near. Put me towards the end. 
No worries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we'll jump ahead to item 11, EV-20-10-044. And that'd be 543 Mohawk Street. Looking for Sheila and Kevin Cruz. Hello. There's uh, Mr. Cruz. Am I saying that correctly? Yep. Great. You please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And please state your name for the record. Kevin Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Jacqueline? Okay, so this application is in response to code violations for work already completed. The house and window trim have been painted a Valspar Rocky Bluffs taupe. Uh, double doors have been painted a Valspar Rose Green or a blue. And the door to the original house remains unpainted. Some restoration hardware furniture, including an umbrella and containers of ornamental grass and roses, have been added to the patio area. In removal of boxwoods and hydrangeas from the mulch bed and replaced with pea gravel. In response to the commissioner questions from the September 22nd business meeting, the applicant has heard that the landscaping has taken place uh, in the side yard. There's no rear yard on the property. And the pea gravel was in place of mulch and placed on top of dirt, so no cement is involved. So staff uh, recommends that the door color be painted a less bright color or maybe tone to be more appropriate to the building style and village. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Mr. Cruz, anything to add? Sorry, I just muted. Um, notwithstanding, we didn't go through the proper order of things, which we apologize for. Um, the door color, um, this might get back into this uh, conversation of what you were just having in terms of what has been said as a precedent versus what should be in the future. I'm not gonna weigh in on that philosophically, but there are many examples of uh, uh, of the same color that we have found in across the street. There's a pretty, there's a new um, retail store. We're fine with the color, but it is bright orange, which I don't think is a historic color. So, um, Obviously, if necessary, we will repaint the doors, but uh, we prefer not to. And ironically, we do get a lot of, and I'm not on it, but my wife is, Instagram coverage and a lot of people taking pictures on our stoop with professional photographers, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Uh, understood. All right, questions, comments from the commission? Well, I have to say that blue is a historic color because we, we did a paint analysis of the Wood Opera House and had like 15 different layers. And one of them was blue, and that's the one the client went with. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Teresa, and I, I'd be curious what staff would say would be an appropriate color. Jacqueline, do you have any guidance that you provide on appropriate colors at all? or? Um, so staff is not opposed to blue. It's just the first the tone uh, was called out uh, from code, and I know that uh, at least for building other components, other buildings have had a similar color painted and called out. Let me just be concerned that it might stand out. So not the color itself, but perhaps the tone. Understood. I, I agree with with others. I mean, I think there's a common misconception that there weren't bright colors and historic colors, and there and there were, and oftentimes they were used in these ways. And I, I will make a comment of uh, the commission is not necessarily in the in the practice of going out and placing placing our colors. We do uh, address issues that come to us from three hundred one complaints, uh, and we also will look at what's provided in applications to us. Uh, not everything in the village is approved by the commission, and that's a, a statement that we'll make often. <laughs> so we we just make want to make that clear that uh, sometimes what you see out there is not something we've looked at or approved or has even been made aware to us at all. So we take each application that comes to us and and make our our uh, 
uh, approvals based upon that information. So that said, are there any other further questions or comments from the commission? Uh, and if not, is there a motion? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd um, find out where it's at. GV 2010 044. Uh, I move to uh, 543 Mohawk Street. I move to approve as submitted. Second. Uh, are there any questions or any questions on the motion? And, and I will make the comment that this is a painted door as opposed to a uh, um, a alternative material where the color is baked in. Yeah, I think it's an original door, to be honest with you. At least it's been there forever. Yep. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. All right. Uh, Mr. Unglis, you have video working? <laughs> Getting started later. I think I'll just throw the towel in. I have no idea. <laughs> it asked me. It asked me if I want to use my camera. I say yes, but the camera's not on. And uh, so God only knows. I'll have to. Uh, I guess yeah. I'll have to wait. Hey, Darren, if you'd like me to uh, run my computer down the street for you, I can. I'm, it's Kevin Chris right down the road from you. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Would you like me to? Um, it's working sure. for me. Sure, if you're if you're dumb. Right. Uh, I'm gonna come. It's probably gonna disconnect and have to reconnect on your Wi-Fi. But I know this computer's working because I'm on it now. So. And Derek, I know you had two devices earlier. Have you tried using the video with um, a phone or anything? Sometimes that helps. No, I've not. Let me do that, Kevin. Let me try the phone. I'm gonna kick out of this and then. Uh... Okay, is it seven, is it seven nine six? No, it's six three six. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kevin. All that's right. Com that's community right there. Look at that. <laughs> no. we'll, check, we'll check back in on six three six Mohawk uh, a little bit later here. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll move forward uh, to number twelve GV dash two zero dash one zero dash zero four five one two one East Frankfurt Street. Looking for either Marty Steen or someone from Snyder's Unlimited Contracting or another applicant for one two one East Frankfurt. All right, we'll put that one on the list. Jack, I hope you're keeping a list too, because <laughs> it's getting long. Yeah, I'm making right. little uh, symbols. I did hear from that applicant today, although technically I suppose they didn't fully confirm if they were coming. Okay. All right, we'll try. Uh, is someone here for 742 South 5th? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. After, yeah. The owner's here as well, Anthony Meyer. Okay, great. Uh, so we'll go to item number 13, GV-20-10-046-742 South 5th Street. And Mr. Meyer is still on the record. Uh, is there somebody else that wants yeah, to speak? Yeah, Dan, Dan with APCO. All right. Dan, if you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do, yes. And please state your full name for the record. Dan Gessler. Thank you, Mr. Gessler. Thank you. Declan. Uh, so this application involves the full frame removal of existing windows, and that includes a combination of older and newer non-contributing windows. The applicant would like to replace these windows with the Marvin Ultimate Next Generation 2.0, and the new windows are proposed to have simulated divided lights, or two over two, with the window color to be ebony. Uh, the applicant has submitted a window schedule and information in response to the commissioner feedback from the September 22nd business meeting. And the information is uh, added on next to or on that window schedule. Uh, so historic windows uh, appear to be in overall good condition or repairable condition. The staff uh, is supportive of replacing the non-historic windows with those windows from the proof window list, but would like to see the historic windows be repaired rather than replaced. 
Uh, anything to add from the applicant? Uh, no. All right, uh, Jacqueline, uh, looking through the application materials, uh, as far as the schedule of windows, is there a notation of which windows on each elevation? Or is that just the uh, page 24 and on? I think you're breaking up a little bit for me. I'm sorry. Uh, looking through the application materials, is there elevations calling out which are which? Looks like it's just photos of, of portions of the building. On page 24 starting. Okay. So for the applicant, uh, on the primary facade, I'm sorry. Uh, are those... you're, you're pretty choppy, Jacqueline. Uh, all right, so for the applicant, um, looking at the primary facade of the structure, so the very first photo. Uh, the four windows on the primary structure, are those original windows or are those re current replacements? Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are original. And then With, those are storm windows on the outside of them. Okay. But the, the windows themselves are, are original. Correct. And then on the facade with the porch, are those original as well? Yes. Okay. All right. And then it looks like if you turn the corner of the property uh, to go down that side street on the side on that side, are those original or are those replacements? the windows that are not original are embedded within the siding, the wood siding of the home? Gotcha. I'm just trying to kind of piece together what we're looking at holistically here. And the wood siding is that on the second floor of the rear? Correct. Okay. That wraps around the house. Okay. Wood siding's on the pool house and also the garage. Gotcha. So it's three structures. Okay. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? I mean, from the wind, from the pictures, the windows don't look that deteriorated. That they should be removed. Was there a site visit? Or we're not doing site visits. There's not a site visit, but from the photos and from the information submitted, the windows look to be in repairable condition. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, I'd be hard pressed to to take out the original windows. I don't have a problem with uh, the ones that are currently replacements already replacing those, especially if there's not if they're not a mixed bag across the facades, but taking out the original windows, if they're in repairable condition, I would I'd have a problem with personally. So for, for the. For the applicant, um, our options are we can vote on the application as is on on replacing all the windows, uh, or if you'd like, you could amend the application to something that you may be replacing the the non original windows. I think that could be a, an easy pass um, and get you at least moving forward with something. Um, so they were submitted separately. Okay. I think when I resubmitted photographs, I included them in one deck, but I believe this that we're reviewing is only for the contributing windows and i dan did we receive a staff approval for the non-contributing windows we did yes understood. which would be like these two vinyl windows here understood so jacqueline can you can you confirm the application i just want to make sure that we're voting on the correct thing from what you have in your records no, I, I think that sounds right. I think we were going back and forth. Uh, and then those, uh, the applicant can correct me, we're on an addition, so they are separated. What is, what is the criteria for what is deemed to be repairable and 
not repairable and the cost that goes into those types of things with these old windows is that just is there a count taken for that or what what how is that determined so typically cost issues come down into a, a hardship condition which would be heard upon appeal not upon first uh, application uh, a lot of times with the original windows if they're in good condition if it's just missing things like the ropes or weights uh, popping off the trim uh, cutting any paint to make those free again. A lot of times that it's not a, a very heavy lift to, to get those cleaned up and moving again. Uh, the, the problem we see that we when we replace the originals or things that would lead us to replace originals is when you have a lot of rot uh, or the windows themselves are just deteriorated and falling apart. Or we don't see any evidence of deterioration. It just sounds like it's missing some of the components, weights, ropes, um, and maybe some sticking due to some of the trim being too tight or painted over. Yeah, most of these windows do not operate. There's also a mix of windows that are divided lights and some that are not. Um, so they're clearly like, it seems as though there's been, there's been work done on these and things have been replaced, but they've just been left uh, kind of incomplete um, and not completely cohesive as a unit, as a complete residence between the addition and with the uh, original residents, even though those windows are older and probably some original contributing, some have definitely been replaced. Some have divided lights, some don't. So there, there seems like there's, in my opinion, enough inconsistencies uh, across the property that it would make sense to make it more uniform. Um, and, and in my opinion, obviously with the Marvin window, that window historically, as far as the certain elements of windows that you want to see replaced fall into line there. And I, I don't think it devalues the property um, and actually would probably raise the value being that we could actually make it consistent across the property. Looking at the photos submitted, uh, the only ones that look like divided lights is uh, window number one in the kitchen. Uh, and then there is window eight and nine on the garage. Everything else looks like one over ones which looks like consistency across the property, unless there's something that's not been submitted correctly. Well, I'm not, yeah, I, I agree. I'm not saying every window has divided lights. There are, there are windows that do, there are windows that don't. My assumption is that, and I don't know what how you guys view this, but what if the windows originally had divided lights uh, in them, but now do not, and we're trying to restore that back? What is there, is there room for, debate or discussion on that and do and do you do we have photos of the home i you know i don't have any of obviously but i know that you guys have had those in the past is that something to look at if you have photographic evidence of divided lights in these red windows originally through historic photos we're happy to take that into consideration oh no but, I, don't, I don't i don't i'm yeah. not trying to argue i don't have those i'm just trying to understand and and kind of make our our case but I know I don't know where those wind where those architect are where those historical photos if there is an even if there is one, um, but I have seen I have you guys have used those in the past uh, to make points. I didn't know if you had some of those readily available um, in your disposal. We we don't uh, some some ways to find that information. Uh, staff may have some in an old version of the file. Each property has its own file. Um, okay. The German Village Society has some house files there uh, and those are all those are all online yeah all online through the yeah. past perfect program uh, but yeah if, if if you can come across some photos showing the divided lights we we take that consideration for sure if there's evidence that there were divided lights at one point in time but lacking that evidence and if if the windows that are there are look like they're original we go with the evidence that we have okay and we we, we are very reticent to take out windows that are original or appear original uh, if they're not damaged beyond repair, essentially. And and we're not so focused on maintaining a uniform appearance. We're focused on preserving the historic uh, features of the house. So if we've lost some historic features, but some remain, we're interested in preserving the ones that remain. And just so you know, I am as well. I'm not trying to argue that point. I am just trying to 
make a case, but I, I, I agree. So we're, we're always here to help under, people understand for sure. Um, so, so with that said, I'm just trying to make sure we're, we're looking at the right stuff. So in the application materials here on hand, uh, just to walk through, uh, Jack, if you can go to page uh, 24, which shows the, the first numbered windows. So I guess you probably go through, identify which ones of these are actually part of this application, which ones may be separate. I just want to make sure we're, we're talking about the same apples to apples. So the kitchen window, is this one of the ones that would be part of this application for sure? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then the one below that, uh, number two bedroom? Yes. All right. And the next page, uh, number three bedroom. So all four of these windows, I would assume. Yes. Okay. And the next photo. The four bedroom. Yes. And that was an upper right and the other photograph. Gotcha. I'm guessing number five is probably bathroom. That's on the first floor looking in. So you could see that in a later picture. They're easily recognizable. We have holes in the glass where they see someone placed a security alarm like mm -hmm. piece. So we can't remove those plus the glass in the bottom half. Gotcha. Yeah, we're put, replacing the glass in the, the wood sashes. Uh, the original wood sashes is not a difficult task okay. for our, our repairs. Uh, the next the pantry window. Yeah, you can see that on the bottom right. And the previous one was on the bottom left. Okay. Those would be included. And the next one's uh, the pool house. Uh, no, that's considered to be non-contributing. Okay. Or non-historic. And the garages would be... Dan, can you address the garage windows? Uh, garage windows, I don't know if those are original or not. They are currently wood exterior, wood interior. Um, that's hard to say. I don't know. Jacqueline, do we know if we have any uh, Sanborn evidence of this garage? Uh, yeah, I can look it up. I'm sure there's something if, uh, if it was there. Dan, do you know if... Uh, if about the approximate age of the garage, I'll just offhand. I do not know. Okay. I'm assuming they're not original, but I don't, but I don't know. So from the commissioners, are there any of these windows that you see that you would be okay with replacing with a replacement window? I, I can't tell from, from the windows that I've seen, no. Lack of response, I assume that would be the stance of most of the commission. So but for the applicant, I mean, we could... We could vote on it as is, uh, or you can continue it if you want to do some more research on it, uh, or you could amend the application in another way. Just trying to give you something to move forward with here. Uh, we can. It's up to you, Anthony, but we can extend it to see if we can find evidence of the, the divided lights. Would that be something where, when you say that would take, you take that in consideration, would that be, what would that mean? I mean, is that like a, we probably would or still probably not because, you know, depending on what the work is to find that out. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if, if you find photos that show a divided light and they're older photos, then that's evidence that there were divided lights in there at one point, which indicate that these are not original windows. And yeah. Very rarely would you see somebody going in, taking out dividers and then patching all the woodwork. Right. So that would kind of indicate that these windows are not actually original and they were wood replacements at some point in time. But okay. Do they, do they have their own significance now? Yeah. yeah. When determine when that happened, if it was they replaced 
in 1920s, then it might be an issue. But if they're replaced in the 50s or 60s, different conversation. Yeah. Yeah, my understanding of this house was heavily renovated in the pool and everything added in the, I think, the early 80s, but I'm not sure. That's correct. When I'm looking at the Sanborn right now, there was a, it looks as if to be a smaller structure that was in the location where the garage is. Yeah, the garage is fairly new. The garage to the pool house is fairly new. And there was definitely a structure where the pool house is. I believe it was a smokehouse that's been just kind of altered. Yeah. Yep. So if the if the pool house and the garage were, were done built in the eighties, we could we could say that those windows are not historically significant and those windows would probably be approvable. But without any kind of evidence on the primary structure, I don't I don't see a way forward for you on those. At the pool I don't house. believe I can provide any other information. Yeah. Um, so I would say we could go to a vote. But if, if we vote and we uh, and we vote for a denial of the primary structure, um, we would be not denying the entire application. Would you like us to, to vote separately on the pool house and the garage separated from the primary structure? We already have the pool house windows. Okay. Part of that, they're non-contributing. They're like, you know, Anderson windows from 20 years ago. Okay. Um, but the garage was... I don't think that was on there, Jacqueline. I don't believe the garage on that COA that we got staff approved. We're not even that pressed to replace the garage at this point in time. So, yeah, we can just we can just curb it for now, and then Anthony, we can we can talk later about uh, pursuing it if we want to from there. Okay, Is it because we feel that we don't have a go. <laughs> Is that why? If if we continue it, it puts you back at the top of the next meeting's agenda. If you want to proceed forward. Or you can just, or you can, you can pull the application all together later on if you'd like. If we voted down, you'd have to start from scratch with the uh, uh, application process. I mean, the only other point that I think I should be making is that these are not working. They are heavily fogged, which means I'd be replacing all of that original glass. The only thing left would be the frame. And the only reason why it's protected is because I leave these hideous storm windows up that are from the 80s. And so if what we're looking to do is to continue to have these storm windows in this in the neighborhood, that's the look that we'll have. I mean, that's my fear is that if I have to move forward and repair these, I will have to maintain the storm windows. So I just don't think that in all honesty, I do think that my next step would be to remove the storm windows. And if they deteriorate, then I would move forward. But I don't want that to be the case, right? I don't want to disrepair the home, but I definitely do you feel the need to take down the storm windows? And taking off storm windows is, is your prerogative as the homeowner. Uh, the old wood windows are old growth wood. They tend to hold up well as long as they're maintained. Painting every storm windows. windows. <laughs> yeah. so. Storm windows are recommended. Yep. So if you'd like so to- at this point, Dan, I'd like to move to a vote just to see where we stand. Can we always resubmit? Where does that stand? Yeah, yeah we just wouldn't have if we just put it if we just pause it, then we'll we can look, we'll be on the list already. We don't have to resubmit, but we can resubmit easily. That's no problem. Yeah, I'm curious what this what the feedback from everyone is individually. So I'd like to go to a vote. That's fine. Sure. All right. Is there a motion? On item GV 20 10 46 to 742 South Fifth Street. I move to approve as submitted. Second. And just for the record, we, we always make motions in the affirmative and then vote yay or nay against that. We never make a motion in the negative. So we'll go ahead and make the call. Uh, Commissioner Thiel? Nay. Commissioner Durst? No. Commissioner Ferriel? No. Commissioner Foley? No. And the chair votes no as well. Okay, thanks. And uh, Commissioner Thiel, do you have the guidelines handy? I don't. Sorry. Shoot, I don't either. Um, stand, by. stand by. We just need to make sure that we make the proper citations for a formality here.
Oh, Ned, where am I going to find this? Uh, so 3116.11 uh, standard, standards for alteration. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, Item number two, distinguishing characteristics of the property should not be destroyed. The removal or alteration of historic material or distinctive architectural feature shall be avoided whenever possible. Yeah. Uh, You've got them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, number five, distinctive stylistic features and examples of craftsmanship that characterize a property shall be treated with sensitivity. Number six, deteriorate architectural features shall be repaired rather than replaced whenever possible. Uh, in the event replacement is necessary. Uh, materials that match material being placed in composition, design, color, texture, and other oh. qualities. Repair or replacement of missing architectural features shall be based on accurate duplications of features, uh, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> uh, and 12, and pass upon appropriateness, the commission shall consider in addition to any other pertinent factor. The characteristics, typical structures in the district or listed property, uh, style, features, design, et cetera, et cetera. I think those wrap it up. Jacqueline, you got those? I do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much to the applicant. Great. Thank All you. Right. Looking ahead, we are on item number 14, GV-20-10-047, 744 Yeager Street. We have Ms. Bullock or Mr. Knitter. We're both here. All right, if you would both please raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Juliet Bullock. All right, John Knitter. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application is to replace the existing. Existing porch has a rubber roof and porch. The porch is to be replaced with a redesign and keeping of the architecture of the home. The applicant would also like to remove an AC condenser from the window and add a window into that existing opening at the west elevation. The applicant would like to install a new three-fourth light front door and add a patio in the back garden. And in response to Commissioner meeting, the applicant has stated they have previously received approval to re-roof the house, taking the skirting off the porch and to do the windows, etc. cetera. Uh, and that when they attempted to re-roof the porch and reduce skirting, they realized the porch was <laughs> inadequately framed and that porch was closed when trying to replace the roof sweeping. The applicant said that they also had permission to modify the columns, um, but that some of the supporting structure was raw and that all the sheathing was rotted, similar to the main roof of the house, that the structure was also undersized and would not pass the current code. The applicant also noted that the posts uh, were rotted that were holding up the porch deck and that some were sitting on the concrete blocks and others were sitting on the slab of concrete and that there was no connection between the porch and the footing. And the applicant notes that when they realized uh, that they were going to have to rebuild the porch, uh, they stopped work. And then and when they realized that they would need to get approval to reconstruct the roof. And so that's uh, why they're bringing it now so that it could be rebuilt and reframed. The staff did find maps that show the porch appearing on the 1920 Sanborn maps, or at least a porch. Uh, so staff does recommend to match the existing configuration. The staff believes this is the historic or a historic porch. Does the applicant have anything to add? Um, uh, at some point, we don't know when. So portions of the porch had an original beadboard ceiling, and that's the south facing porch. The rest of the porch, which would be facing west, did not have a beadboard ceiling, and it was constructed differently from the other end of the porch. So at some point, somebody reconstructed the west facing porch. So uh, we're not sure exactly what was historic, what was not. And that's one of the reasons we came 
back to the commission, you know, my, my client would prefer just to do a smaller porch. And it was his thinking that that's what was historic. We hadn't seen what um, she just provided there. But it, it clearly the construction of the west facing porch was more contemporary than the rest of the porch. So at some point it was replaced. Um, the other thing I would add is this house, what we have found is that, um, and you've seen as we've come through with other applications for this, uh, is that whoever did kind of the rear, reconstructed the um, rear addition and constructed the dormers, and clearly who did this porch roof, did a really poor job of it. If you remember the whole um, roof inside was covered in mold because the roofs weren't properly ventilated. You know, there was a lot of issues with rafter sizing, et cetera. Um, the only other thing, none of the windows here are historic. Um, they have been replaced with smaller openings. And if you remember, we came back to you before and said, we want to put these windows back to the original size and you had approved it. I don't, John, do you have anything to add? Yeah, that's, that's, that's about right. Uh, just trying to, if we need to put back the, the whole thing, I will, but um the, the one section for sure that's facing south appears to be the original section with the um tongue and groove beadboard ceiling and um I'm, i've gotten a lot of i know it doesn't really matter but i've gotten a lot of compliments since we removed our that the rest of the porch came down there and we got rid of the air conditioning from the west facing area so you can see the house and for all its for all its glory i guess and uh so yeah if at all possible i'd just like to uh, rebuild or um, improve the structure that's facing south, and just make that make that look nice and make it structurally sound for years going forward. And yeah. All right. Questions coming from the commission. So part of this porch was demolished without permission. No. no. <laughs> we, we got permission to uh, re-roof, and we're in the process of roofing, and that. The portion that's facing west, I mean, it was just a hodgepodge of the post and um, uh, plywood, rotted plywood there. So once we took off the rubber to roof it properly, we, we did, you can, I don't know if you can just go by there, but we roofed the whole structure already, except for the porch. When we got to the porch, it started collapsing on us, and that's when we stopped. Um, so you know, we were, we were, our intention was to uh, re-roof like we did everything else, but once it started falling apart, we decided to submit for, you know, for uh, correcting the correcting the structure, correcting the uh, workmanship. We did submit some pictures that kind of showed some of the construction issues. Yeah, like I said, the uh, the west facing uh, porch is just plywood, rotted plywood. Uh, the portion that's still standing is uh, tongue and groove, and it's 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 still not great. I mean, if you stand on it, it it shifts around, and it it's it's moving. But um, but the west facing was in terrible condition. Once we took off the rubber that was the part of the rubber roof over the west facing area, it started falling down. And you know my guys got off there, and we, instead of just trying to brace it all up, because the, the plywood was already coming down, and the plywood's all rotten. That's why we took pictures of the plywood once it hit the ground. So I, I guess my comment is you lost the west porch, but why does that mean it doesn't go back? No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. I, if, if, the, if the commission thinks that it's original, we had no idea. All I could tell from the workmanship and the materials that it was like newer materials. So I wasn't sure when it was put up. If the commission thinks that it's a part of the original structure, yeah, I'll just rebuild it as make it better, make it make it last for a long time. One way or another, it wasn't going to be lasting long anyway because of the workmanship. But no, I'm fine with putting it all up. I'd rather not. I'd rather just have this the south facing porch that that like say has the original tongue and groove ceiling versus the other porch. But you know, if we don't know for sure then either porch or either either facing direction was done and I'm I'm good either way actually. So, so the south facing porch from from bearing down looks like it's the same construction as the west facing porch. Is that right, Julie? Um, there's some difference in the footings. Okay. So somebody, I mean, somebody tried to shore this up 
at different locations over time. Yeah. And some some of them, they did a good job. You saw where they had like a concrete footing and they, they very clearly, other times they, you know, just poured concrete around the post or just like stuck a block in there. So, you know, they weren't consistent in how they repaired it. So it was at, that it was like done over time. Look at page five. Jack yeah. Yeah, we just don't, we honestly did not know. <laughs> you know, this is such an unusual house for German Village. And, you know, and Jonathan asked me, well, do you think this was original, this porch? And I'm, you know, I haven't seen a house like this in German Village. So I said, I don't know. You know, when he asked me, how should we reconstruct it? I said, I think we need to apply to German Village and, and get their recommendation. So that's why we're here. So you can see some of the posts under there that aren't great. And like, you know, they're yeah. under... <laughs> <laughs> some are well, under columns and some columns don't have a porch, don't have a post under it, but yet they're supporting the roof and there, there's some, and the spacing is so odd too. So I just don't know. And so we're just trying to find out what the commission think would, would be an appropriate approach for us, basically. Do we know how long the house has had these two porches at all? We don't, do we? We just don't know. Well, the, no. the sandborn shows the L-shaped porch. Now, the question, yeah. question is whether it's still the original materials or if it was replaced right. at some point. We don't know. Yeah. yeah, well, it's clearly not the original materials because it's yeah. plot, at least you know, for the roof structure and some of the columns. Yep. I'm guessing the south-facing porch roof structure may be more more original than the rest. That's what, that's what I thought. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm I, guessing the foundations you talked about, they reused the original foundations. I'm guessing the columns and the deck and everything rotted up, Julie, 15, yeah. 20, 30 years ago. And the west west facing porch did at the same time, and they replaced it all. You know, yeah. and it, I mean, it, it, it could have been longer than that, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think much is left of the original porch. Of the original material. I, yeah. I agree. So the yeah. question is, is what's the appropriate design for for this? Right. <laughs> I mean, we know that it was an L-shaped porch at some point in the uh, Sanborns. Is that what is that what you take your cue from, or I don't know, Teresa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are the twenty Sanborns the earliest ones that show this house? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I guess we're saying that the house has always had the L-shaped porch. As far as we know, I guess. Yes. But yeah, I'm inclined to say that if it's been substantially altered to the point that we've lost all the historic materials, uh, then you're just supposed to put back what physical evidence says was there before. Okay. So you're trying to put stuff back, you just have to have physical evidence that it was there. Yeah. And the problem is it's hard to interpret the physical evidence, yeah. to be honest. Except we think maybe the roof of the south facing thing is more honest than anything. Yeah, for sure. So Teresa, is your is your opinion that since we know it was an L-shaped porch, we should put an L-shaped porch back taking cues from the south facing porch? Or do we say that the 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 west facing porch was replaced at some point in time, and since we don't have original material, we don't put anything back. Period. What do you? What's your thought on that? I'm trying to think. I think the shippo allows you not to put stuff back if it's no longer there. Yeah. If you want to restore something, then you. Have, if you want to put something back, then you have to have evidence of what it looked like. And that's pretty much it. So if it's not there anymore, you don't have to put it back. But if you want to put something back, it has to be based on physical evidence. But the kink of this is that there was something there that when they started to work on it, well, and it collapsed. <laughs> yeah, there, there was a porch which yeah. footprint wise match material necessarily may not have. Yeah. yeah. So we're kind of a half and half. Yeah. So, so I guess if this was a tax credit project, you would end up putting the L shaped porch back in as close and historic, the appropriate manner as possible. Mm -hmm. It's, it's always had an L-shaped porch. It had one when we started working on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, should we shouldn't we assume that maybe the columns were equally spaced also? Yeah, I think you can assume 
those design details, like an historically appropriate column, an appropriate column spacing, an appropriate okay. footer. <laughs> okay. All right. And and I think if you, if you go back to that page five photo that you had pulled up there earlier, Jacqueline, I think underneath the porch, my guess is that that's the proper spacing that was there originally. Oh, okay. And the columns on top of the porch probably got all jacked up <laughs> at some point in time. Okay. Just because it's it's pretty regular, and and I think if you turn the corner on, if you could see it on the on the west face yeah. of the porch, those mm -hmm. are all pretty evenly spaced. Okay, so I can go measure those and then get it. Looked. Yeah, and and it looks like there, on there. the I can measure the holes too. So <laughs> yeah, it looks like the west facing porch, the columns. It's almost like you have one column for every other under porch support until you get yeah. back towards that corner, and then they went one per. So I. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a question of do you put one every other on that west facing porch or do you do a mix? Mm -hmm. I think that's an architectural decision to make. Yeah, I think we'll we'll know once we kind of lay out the other side. It'll tell us what it should be. I think so. Is this something that staff can review or can we make a recommendation just because we're getting into weather and I guess from your perspective, Julia, would you want to do one every or one every other? I think I think there's enough information to kind of rebuild this west facing porch with the information from the south facing. I think yeah. the, the question mark is the column placements. What you what you want to do with that? Yeah, I would think every other because I, only because you can't see it in this picture in this corner. So basically, you'd be adding a center column and then the far right. Yeah. Yes. Well, from the commission, do you have any problem with the staff approving based on that information alone, or is there any more guidance you'd want to give them, or is this something that you all want to have come back to the commission? How comfortable is staff approving this based on the, the issue is column space? That's what yeah, I mean, I think this picture really shows what the proper column spacing should be that's on the screen now. Those three, you know, the first three spacings is about, yeah, there you go. I think that's really. I mean, it looks like other porches in the village too. So it seems to me, I think those double columns are a bit of anomaly. Like they had some failure or something and they added them in there. It seems to match the every other yeah. porch Paul post mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, so I would try to match that layout of those like first three columns there. Go from there. I, I would just say if staff's comfortable with it, fine. If staff's not, it, he comes back to the commission. Yeah, I could show it to her, and if she feels uncomfortable, then we can come back. Yeah, from what's being described, I think it would be uncomfortable, especially the way uh, those first couple of columns have that relationship to the fenestration. It just seems to make more sense and be more compatible. So if we're putting back that, what we see for those first couple of columns to be that original just column sense, then I think we'll be okay. And I do do one question, Juliet. Um, mm -hmm. On the dormer itself, I know looking at some of the historical photos, um, there is like little stubby roof in between each of those windows in the dormer. Did that get totally removed, or did that get put back? Say that again. I'm sure. I'm not sure. I understand what you're asking. Up on the dormer, mm -hmm. in between each of those windows, that roof mm -hmm. line from the front portion of the house was continued on in between those windows. That got taken off when all the exterior was taken, stripped off. Did that get put back when the roofing got placed, or is is that still not replaced? Jonathan, can you answer that? Uh, not replaced. Yeah, taken off the cedar shake siding that was on there. Um, yeah, that, that, that came off. Yeah, yeah, that came off. Yeah. And yeah, the shake siding, came off, but there was a, a roof line that continued on through that. On the face on the facade of that uh, dormer previously. Yeah, intermittently through the windows. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And it's in the one picture, it's still there, Anthony. Yeah, I'm not sure. On page four, the picture on page four. Uh, oh. No, page four doesn't have it. I'm pulling it up here. 
see any, any of the photos. I don't see it there. But it's clearly visible if you do Google Street View. I was scrolling through the other day. We haven't gotten to that point yet with our work we're doing. Um, okay. That's something that's. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was the original feature of the house. It should yeah. be. It should be going back. Yeah. We're, we're putting that back. Yeah, he needs to. Put, yeah, he needs to put that back. In. I'm sorry, I yeah. wasn't following what you were asking, but no, no worries. If, if the work hasn't got there yet, I understand. I just saw it. Don't yeah. want to make comments. So we're not caught off guard later. Okay. Yeah. We also had a question about the window replacement. I don't know if we can talk to. He's at. You know, we had approved for the the windows to be replaced. Um, he is asking if we can do two over two instead of the clear window. And I had submitted some additional information on that that a neighbor provided. So. Uh, just, trying on, just trying to get some feedback on the divided windows to see if that's something you think. I haven't added that to this application, but I will note that I think the house uh, dates approximately to like 1910, 1920s, which I think would be a little bit late for two over two windows. You know, actually, I have paper insulation inside is from uh, 1906. Huh. And, yeah, and um, yeah. Just cool old paper, newspapers for insulation. So it's been there a while. You know, one of the one of the beams inside is hand it's hand uh, hewn or hand uh, chopped just to make it fit. It's so I think it's I think it's from 1906 or 1900 in that range. So the when is that when is it you took out? Were those old old or were those replacements at some point in time? All the windows are replacements. Okay. There were no, so we don't know what was there originally. Again, <laughs> this house is a little bit of a mystery. Um, so we were just, you know, and it, and my client and actually the neighbor across the street would really love to see the divided light windows. So, but we were just not sure if that's something the commission would consider or not, like appropriate for the house. So that's why we're asking. More of a conceptual, like, do you think it would work or not? <laughs> Yeah, part of the abstract showed a mortgage on this place at, I don't know if it was 1896 or 19, 1900, what it was, but just shows that there's been a prop, appears to have been a, a structure there um, for that time period. Charissa, or Matt, do you guys have any thoughts on the two over two? I could actually see it being three over one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Did you say three over one, Teresa? Yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of it in a, like wood frame houses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I mean, and, and you know, one over one could have been big on the East Coast, but out here it could have been 30 years before it got here. You know, I mean, that's got that lag. Um, so at the 1905, 1910 range, would you be comfortable with a two over two? I, I can't say one way or the other, so I'd probably say yes. What do you think, Teresa? Yeah, I mean, divided lights would have been common, and yeah. even mixed divided lights, you know, two over one, even two over. So. Yeah, I'm thinking two over one. I mean, if, if you had the money, you would go for the for the single on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I think I think it's an option that the commission would entertain. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that's right. helpful. Thank you. So for the rest of it, um, looking through the application, uh, AC condenser removal is not an issue. Uh, the front door, three-quarter light front door. Do we have information on that door? Didn't see anything in the package. I submitted some information on it, yes. I had the spec on it. Let me uh, see. Are you comfortable with the, the front door? Uh, let's say the three over four, or sorry, the three four flight. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And the application says patio in the back garden. Don't really have any information on that patio either. 
Jacqueline added that one. <laughs> okay. So that's yeah, we we have to do a landscape plan and submit okay. something. Okay. Yeah. So I so asking us to take that off the application, correct? Okay. Stand the door. Ned, would you be okay if, if with the staff approving the door if they get the information? I, I, I'm not in favor of a three quarter light front door. Okay. That's way too modern. So what would you suggest? I would I would go for half half. I mean that typically is what we've seen. Okay. Yeah, you know, with the bottom with the bottom panel. Okay. I that I think that would be fine. So we can we can change it to a half light. Okay. Yeah. Now this house is just a little difficult to pin down because there's just not a lot left. So and it's an I feel like it's an unusual house for German Village too. So it's a great house. Yeah, I love this house. It's I do too. <laughs> the, the rumor on the street was there was a there was a boarding house at one point in time. Oh, really? Interesting. Multiple, multiple unit boarding house. Rumor on the oh. street. Can't stay for sure. I've heard that too. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Okay. All right. I don't think we have any other questions. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the commission? Okay. Is there a motion? I'll try. Um, item 14 GV 2010 047 744 Jaeger Street. I move to approve as modified that the um, porch will be uh, built as an L. The spacing of the columns will be um, staff approved um, unless they feel uncomfortable with that and they bring it back to the commission. Uh, the AC condenser certainly can be removed. The uh, front door will be half light and the patio is removed from the application. Second. All right, second there for the Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Field? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Oh, not there. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Chair looks aye as well. Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so one last little thing. I, I'm curious. It occurs to me that isn't this the house that Tom and Highland Greensdorn lived in? Is that right? No. Um, no. The house okay. Has two houses to the north. Okay. I'm just can I'm confusing it with another house. I was thinking they might be around and would have information, but no. Okay. Never mind. Thanks. All right. Uh, moving on to item 15. Uh, GV-20-10-048-722 South Pearl Street. Hey, Mr. Chairman, do you want to go back to 5, 6, and 7? Yeah, we'll check 5, 6, and 7. <laughs> do we have anybody here for 796 Mohawk? 796 Mohawk going twice. All right. Uh, number 6, 192 East Beck Street. All right, number seven, Mr. Unglis. We got your pre camera now, great. All right, uh, so we'll go to number seven, GV-20-10-040-636 Mohawk Street. Mr. Um, Chair, and I have to recuse myself. Okay. Uh, Mr. Unglis, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth? I do. Thank you, please state your name for the record. Derek Unglis. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application is to remove the large walnut tree in the backyard. Um, this is due to the declining condition of the tree that has resulted in limbs needing removal or falling. Uh, leaves are sparse during spring and summer months and dropping earlier than customary, and five limbs currently need removal. The applicant is requesting a full, re full removal rather than a costly piecemeal limb removal and to remove possible safety concerns. Uh, the applicant has additionally passed along some input from an arborist about the possibility of replanting a new tree in response to feedback received at the September 22nd business meeting. And the arborist has uh, the comments are being that a tree is possible, but the size and type of the new tree will probably need to be take that issue into consideration. Uh, staff does recommend approval uh, with recommendation that a new tree 
replaces the existing that is suited to the space available. Thank you, Jacqueline. Mr. Unglis, do you have anything else to add? Not really. Uh, I'm obviously concerned about the neighbours um, uh, since a, a, a fairly big limb fell recently, kind of put paid to me sitting in the garden for a while simply because it luckily missed all the seating areas. But um, I don't really think there's there's much more to say. It's uh, it, it's deteriorated over the course of uh, the four years I've been here. Um, even with uh, the best efforts of said arborist. Uh, it's sad. Um, I did, if you look at that picture that's up there now, those uh, on the left there, uh, when I moved in, I planted six hornbeams, which are now probably about 16, 17 feet. Uh, there is a new uh, Japanese maple behind that walnut. Um, but there, there would be room for something. But again, I think we've got to sort of dig it up and see what we find and what kind of tree is going to be possible. But I'm, uh, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Questions, comments from the commission? Looks like it's ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's a comparison of uh, some right around the corner. <laughs> So it should look like versus what it does look like. Yep. Understood. All right. Uh, do you have a, a tree in mind to put back there, or, or are you looking to put no tree back? What, what's, what's your thoughts there? Uh, well, I think I sent a note in earlier saying if the condition for getting this down is to put a tree in, I'm quite happy to do it. Um, to some extent, I'd like like it to be left to what we what we find and then what what aesthetically works best but i'm i'm certainly not opposed to putting another tree in uh so you guys can kind of make that judgment for me if, if you want to um uh it it may need to be the arborist as it may need to be small depending on how much root is left from the walnut so for the commission, I think that's a, a call for the commission to make. I, I will say, looking through the pictures, there is quite a bit of foliage in that yard. I think it's just a matter of losing a very large shade tree. Um, and it appears there are some other trees in there that would be considered shadeable. So. Yeah, I'm fine if he doesn't plant a replacement tree since he's already planted other trees. I concur. Any dissenting opinion on that? All right. I would then recommend we make a motion uh, to move forward without the replanting of a tree okay. unless the uh, applicant chooses to do so. Okay. I move on item 7, GV 20 10 040636 Mohawk Street to approve the application as submitted and the applicant to replace the removed tree if he wishes. Second. All right. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Thiel's recusing. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Great. Thank you. I apologize thank you very much. for the uh, lame brainness with the uh, <laughs> today. <laughs> and my it lady. Happens. <laughs> thanks. It happens. Well, thank you. Thank, and thanks to your neighbor who helped us out. <laughs> thank you. All right, uh, jumping ahead, uh, going back uh, ahead and back, uh, 121 East Frankfurt. Did we get through that one? All right, uh, back to item 15, which let me get my agenda pulled back forward. Uh, 722 South Pearl Street, looking for Mr. Shunk. I'm here. All right, I'm um, looking for your camera. Camera, camera. Oh, I there saw him. There he is. Please raise your right oh. hand. Where am I? I'm not in this and room. And you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Drew Dunk. Thank you very much. Jacqueline? This application involves landscaping, uh, including installing a patio in the rear yard. 
The patio would include Bellcrest 760 mock brick, and it would be dry set over compacted gravel and the sand base, and sloped away from the house in a herringbone pattern. The patio area is to be approximately 25 by 12 feet, with the existing paved walkway connecting the driveway to the home to be removed and merged into this new patio. The existing planting area on the east edge of the porch uh, is to be raised about 15 inches high uh, with a brick wall using brick from the existing walkway. The concrete steps at the enclosed porch are to be covered with the Belcrest 760 mod thin brick. And the applicant would like to replace the existing fence, which they have clarified uh, is not iron, but is uh, something like a, a vinyl or that material. And they would like to replace that with a six foot cedar privacy fence and gate, which would be stained in walnut. Uh, with a new orientation. The applicant would like this existing fence. Well, the existing fence runs east and then north. the applicant would like the new fencing to run east, north, then east. Uh, the new fencing would be board on board with a straight cut vertical boards with a top and bottom rail cap placed between the post. The post would be four by four inches, except on either side of the gate, which would be six by six inches of wood. Or the applicant uh, would also like to repose 12 by 12 inches of brick. Uh, the gate is to be 42 inches wide with a panel style similar to the home entry door with the key locking hardware. The applicant would also like to remove four dead pine trees along the south edge of the yard and the four preferred red maple at the east edge of the property and a volunteer walnut at the southeast corner. The applicant would like to plant a Japanese maple tree south of the patio and a mirror maple at the east edge of the property and shrubs along the perimeter of the rear yard and patio. The applicant has submitted an updated site plan and photos in response to commissioner feedback from the September 22nd business meeting. The applicant has clarified that both sides of the fence will be uh, quote, good sides and that the existing fence, uh, again, is aluminum, uh, just to clarify, and that the plan uh, to, is to either pad out the area under those bull nose steps with mortar or to use a full size brick risers and notch out the brick along the bull nose. The applicant plans to use four inch compacted gravel and one inch tree sand with bricks to set tightly together uh, without with the use of polymeric sand. The maximum height of the fence the applicant would like to know uh, would be about 4.5 inches above six feet for those uh, post and caps. And the applicant uh, also uh, wanted to state that they included the concrete paver richly due to not being able to find the spec for the brick bell crest paver, but that they will not be using concrete and will be using uh, brick pavers. And staff does recommend approval with any conditions or additional modifications to be submitted to staff. Uh, and some of those conditions we would recommend that the fence to be no higher than six foot. And then the wood fence to be one of the specified options like board on board, straight cut or dog eared, uh, or vertical one by six boards uh, with the all straight cut vertical boards installed with the top and bottom rail cap between the four by four inches wood posts. Thank you, Jacqueline. All right, for the applicant, anything else to add? Uh, I think that covered it pretty well. Um, I have nothing to add other than I'll uh, address any questions. All right, uh, questions, comments from the commission? Yeah, I, I don't understand what the work at the concrete steps is. I guess that was the intention there is, is just to kind of dress them up a little bit from being just uh, the basic concrete something aesthetically dressier. Um, I think what, what Jacqueline was saying was, what Jacqueline said was basically thin set. If you can go to number page seven there, Jacqueline, uh, thin set brick horizontally uh, on the step and then the front of the step because it's got that bull metal concrete uh, to take a full height or a full width brick, full thickness brick. Stack that vertical, then notch it out to kind of cover the bull nose, and then the thin brick on top of the step would kind of cover that over. I think is that's what they were intending to do. If that's correct, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. In my opinion, it's it's in the backyard. It's going to be behind the fence. That's, that's what I'm thinking. If this was any place else, it would be a no. But back yeah. there would be fine. It's okay, it's up to them. Uh, any thoughts in the commission on the fence? I have to go back to page four, Jacqueline. A well, six foot tall fence with the posts extending beyond six foot with the cap on top. Uh, 
and the fence style. What's, what is the gate then? The gate looks like a four panel door. Uh, yeah, it's kind of designed to feel like an entry door. So that was the idea. And you're staining it, right? You're not painting it. Staining. I think the guidelines call for paint, but I'm not sure. And for reference, if you go to the very last page, page 24, Jacqueline, that gate is going to be facing the driveway. So visibility from the street will be only at the very front corner there, I believe. Mm. I can say we do typically staff approve uh, for fences, either painting or staining, as long as it's an opaque color and not transparent. So in this case, you're staying instead of a walnut, a brown? Walnut, a brown? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Roughly. You know, with the with the setback at the at the end of the drive, it's 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 a ways off the street, so the visibility is is quite low um, for for all of us. Any concerns with the fence, Ned? No, I don't. And last piece on there. Any concerns with the uh, plantings? Let's see, we got trees going back in place of trees being taken out. There's no other questions or concerns. Is there a motion? Uh, uh, hang on. On item number 15, agenda item number 15, GV 20 10 048 722 South Pearl Street, I move to approve as submitted. Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. The uh, the guidelines do say paint or stained. Okay. Good clarification. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jeff, the question is, is it transparent stain or is it opaque stain? Opaque. It says opaque. Cool. That's the important part. That's the key. All right, on to that number 16, GV-20-07-044-738-742 Yetter Street. Let the record show that the applicants are still on the record from previously. Jacqueline. Okay. So this application uh, proposes to have alterations to design to the design of a new garage, including using JF slate line, English gray slate for the roofing, and uh, gel pen sight line windows. Um, so an alternate design for the new garage was previously submitted for the July 7th GVC hearing. However, um, at that hearing, demolition of the existing damaged garage had been, had been approved due to the tree damage supported by a structural engineer's report. Uh, and at that time, with the condition that the garage be reconstructed, uh, the commissioners requested confirmation of whether the garage has already been torn down and the new garage is a proposed carriage house. Then the commissioners would request streetscapes and alley elevations for the proposed carriage house. Um, so staff recommendation, the approval for demolition was based on the extent of damage and structural engineers report. So the staff would consider that a separate approval so that a new design may be appropriate for new construction, so that any new construction should be compatible with the existing property and the adjacent properties. All right. Um, I did submit a streetscape with the drawings. So it's, it's on the elevation page. So I don't know if that was maybe overlooked. It is on, I can tell you what page it's on exactly, but. Um, yeah, it's on sheet two. I don't know if you want to. So I, the other thing I would say is, you know, when this tree thing happened pretty quickly, and, um, you know, we brought it in and at, at that time, you know, my client wanted to, you know, 
get take care of getting this garage torn down before um you know anybody got hurt or anything collapsed etc um and i did come in at that time i wasn't sure if this was going to be the final design or not and in thinking about it more my client would really like to do um basically the design we've proposed which is kind of like a modified carriage house so there is a kind of street there's actually a carriage house right next to this proposed building there you can see in the top right corner and then there's a one car garage on the other side questions comes from the commission Yeah, I, I, my two things for me. One, this is not an amendment to the previous whatever was approved. This is a whole new application. Number two, I didn't support the last one, and therefore I can't support this one either. We didn't file it as an amendment. We just filed it as you know, it, the, the application says, "Is this a revision to a previously approved plan?" So I said yes. <laughs> I don't know if that throws it into the amendment category, but we we realize that this is a different design um, from what was approved previously. Okay. I think this is more than an alteration, Julie, but that's that's neither here nor there. Yeah, 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 we agree. And that's the way we had submitted it. We were kind of taking cues from what Ned said, which, you know, if you're gonna build a new garage, I don't think you have to match what was there previously. And I think that's, Kind of something my client. Well, my my point was that the original I I voted against the demolition of it because sure I believe the original garage should have been stabilized and restored. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yep. And I'll be on the record. I, I was in the same boat as, as Ned last time around. So, uh, but that being said, uh, Commissioner Foley, what are your thoughts on this one? You've been pretty quiet tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to remember how I voted last time. Um, if I'm being <laughs> frank, um, voted in favor of it. Just FYI. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think, but I think we, I think we had a large discussion about um, the materials matching last time, and I'm trying to recreate recreate yeah. that discussion in my head. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and, and I and I think that that was part of. My approval previously was the condition that the materials were going to to match. I don't know if Jacqueline or if anybody has that information. Do you have the yeah, previous? Submittal? If you could scroll down, um, we have the COE, and there's also some previous submittal documents. If you go to page five, it states that the. Uh... Thank you. Yep. Reconstruction of the garage, including utilizing block material to match the block of historic structure, the second bullet point. I know there was talk of trying to reuse the block that was there. It was talked that uh, a lot of the block was damaged, couldn't be reused, but the statement was made that similar block could be sourced and utilized. And that's kind of what, what drove that conversation there. Yeah, and I, and I remember now, uh, Ed or Ned, um, Ned saying, you know, if you're going to do it, just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I mean, I was of the of the opinion that the age of the building was contributing, and we were demolishing it because because of the damage and it being beyond being demolished. So I was, if I'm remembering correctly, I was in approval because it was going to match. Okay. Um, I feel I'm not sure where I stand on the current design. To be to be quite honest, as I think as I think it through. I think my my comments on the streetscape specifically, uh, looking at in a bubble, looking at this application. Um, you look at the two adjacent structures to the left and to the right. You get page three of the application. Um, it's not bridging the distance. Uh, top right corner, page three, please. Yeah. It would be sheet two of the drawings, but page three of the application. I keep trying. <laughs> Wish I could drive. I know. 
<laughs> I, I tried to do it with my mouse and it didn't work. <laughs> there you go. Stop right corner right up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so the proposed garage, it's not straddling the height of the two adjacent. It's actually going taller. We don't really have the heights of the other two to compare, but mm -hmm. this one's going to be a 28 foot tall uh, compared to 23, 24, maybe to the to the right, and then a single story to the left. Um, so the, the massing is jumping above both adjacent, and I don't know what's left and right of those to see the, the full on streetscape. But that would be my comments to this design size wise, massing wise. I mean, is anyone willing to entertain a garage that like you know a one and a half story if the, the original materials were maintained or is it about the aesthetics as well of the original garage i'm just trying to clarify your thinking on the last vote whether it was more about materials or the actual visual of the existing garage uh speaking for myself um you know it was about massing and materials in, in my in my head, if, if looking at that original one that I was just scrolling down to that last page, um, you know, it was a little different, but it was relatively speaking the same, right? Massing and mm -hmm. materials. Okay. And had it had it not been a contributing structure, um, I would feel differently about it. But take taking down a, a contributing structure because of the extenuating cir circumstances of the tree. And then replacing it with something completely different doesn't make sense in my mind. If there was nothing here and we were doing this as a brand new building in a place where there wasn't a contributing structure previously that we knew about, I'd, I'd feel differently, I think. Okay. I agree with Brent on this. Okay. Jeff, I don't know how often we agree. I like that. <laughs> well, you keep saying sensible things. So I'll keep agreeing with you. So, I think right there. I think we need to uh, just table, I guess, <laughs> or go back. Continue. Um, John, are you still on? Yeah. Yes. Do you have anything further to add? Um. No. I mean, something needs to be done, and obviously, the sooner the better. With with winter coming soon, uh, but uh, obviously I'd like to get this built as is, as we submitted, but um, I also realize the situation and would like to fit in with what's going on. Okay. I, I don't think we have a lot of support for a carriage house at this location. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think uh, the chairman's comment about the massing is, is poignant. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. So. So, Jonathan, are you okay with just tabling, or do you want to vote? Uh, it sounds like uh, tabling would be the better option. Okay. All right. And we still do have approval for the other one. Yeah. You know, we yeah. can go. So back. you still have to move forward with if you want to. You, you, you guys continue this and come back if there's more information or design okay. changes and whatnot. Well, let's okay. continue it then. And I know you guys have had a long night. So. Okay. So, item GV 20 10 047, I move to continue. Second. Any questions on the motion? Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Durst? Aye. Ariel? Aye. McCoy? <laughs> Not McCoy. Commissioner <laughs> Foley? <laughs> I, I will say aye, and I will say that there's a big difference in the way. Commissioner McCoy and I look. <laughs> truth, truth. All right, uh, votes as well. Uh, uh, motion is to be continued. Thank, right. you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's after after six, so obligatory. Uh, asking staff, are you able to stick around? Uh, yep. To, to move forward. Jacqueline, you good? Uh, staff is okay. able, and the commissioner is okay with moving forward. I will say we move forward. I'm good with that. Anthony, do you have a sense of how many we actually have left based on your count? Yeah, well, we have 24 total. We're on number 17. Yeah, 10. And how many were there that we haven't reviewed yet? Three. I and three. I, 
Okay. Three, I haven't seen any of them show up yet still. So okay. I'm good. I'm just trying to get a sense because sure. I am a little tired today. <laughs> I, I <understand. laughs> uh, item number 17, GV-20-10-049, uh, 358356 Beck Street. And I need to recuse myself from this one due to proximity. Uh, so, Commissioner Durst. Durst or Durst? Durst? Durst. That'd be me. There you go. Okay. Do we have a representative from the applicant here? <laughs> Going once. Anthony's back on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's <Nice> try, Anthony. <laughs> Uh, fresher, 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 fresher. <laughs> All right. We'll Didn't even have time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'll add that to my list of go backs. All right. Uh, <laughs> item number 18, GV 20 <laughs> Adam, oh. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm on. I'm on. Sorry. We got some pretty good feedback. If you have a phone and microphone, please turn one of them off. Okay. The homeowner is here. I'm muting. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Uh, so. Who we have speaking today? Brenda Parker. All right, uh, Ms. Parker, you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Parker. Great. And if we need to have Adam talk, we'll have him swear in before he talks, but we'll let you take the lead on this. All right, uh, Jacqueline. Okay, this application is for a variance recommendation as well as exterior alteration. Uh, so. The application requires a variance to allow habitable space in a modern garage and an increase in allowable height. The height of the garage will actually be changing, but the applicant would like to record that the garage does currently exceed the zoning allowable 15-foot height. Uh, the applicant would like to finish the second floor of this existing garage into habitable space, uh, which is the variance component. They would also like to relocate the exterior door, convert an existing double hung window into an egress casement window with a false mullion. And per these finished drawings, add a new window opening and window to the south elevation. And staff recommends approval with any modifications submitted to staff uh, with conditions um, that the garage space should not be a complete separate living space. I, um, it should include a kitchen or bathroom, but not both. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, anything to add from the applicant? No. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? Anybody have questions or comments? Looks like yeah, I guess my, my first thing is this garage doesn't look that old. So how did you get a building permit if it wasn't didn't get the zoning variance for the heights back then? My understanding is that if you get Durham Village approval on height above 15 feet, City of Columbus allows it to go through for a permit. Since we're getting a zoning variance to have the habitable space, they want uh -huh. us to go ahead and get that and too. Acknowledge that. So, so, Ned, I think we had this conversation at the business meeting uh, about if habitable space is required above a garage if it doesn't have both kitchen and bath. Yeah. We go back and forth about this a lot. I wasn't sure if, if you had heard anything along those lines or recalled. So one or the other is very often. One or the other. Yeah. That's that has been the case. I guess for the applicant, what, what what's driving the habitable zoning change? We typically don't see that zoning request come through us. It's the bedroom. It's having a bedroom in a detached garage that's not connected to um, living space directly to living space. Yeah. So right now this is just storage. It's not finished. 
That's correct. It's unfinished. Yeah, yeah so it, it would be a, a storage function and not considered habitable space, Anthony. Okay. So, and converting it to habitable space, they need to get the variance. Gotcha. You, I just, yeah. I was not used to seeing the zoning request from whenever we have this kind of garage new build just straight up. Yeah. Coming through us. Yeah. So I guess because it was built with storage and then they're going for the change as opposed to the typical process. Yeah. The start. So when the occupancy permit probably was, when the occupancy certificate was provided, it listed storage and a garage. Okay. Correct. Okay. That, that makes a little better sense for me. So as staff commented, uh, typically we, we would do um, kitchen or bath, not both. And it looks like your plans are showing a bath with no kitchen. So that's in line with what we, what we look for. Minor architectural changes that really are not significant. Are there any other questions or comments? And if none, is there a motion? All right, is there a motion? I move on application number 18, GV-20-10-050, 183 Alexander Alley, to approve the application as submitted. Is there a second? Second. 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 I'll let Commissioner Thiel have the second. Any questions on the motion? All right, take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Farrell? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll jump ahead to item number 19, which is GV-20-10-051, 720 South Lazelle Street. Do we have James Wolf or Jay Scanlon here? I see Mr. Wolf in the list of attendees and Mr. Scanlon. If you're there, please unmute. Okay, did I unmute? I uh, hear you, you now. Hear me? Okay, good. Is your camera on? I believe so. Lights on. Yeah. I don't see the video stream coming through. Start. Start. Okay. Okay, start again. It's actually giving a symbol that there's no camera allowed. Um, do you know if there were preferences on your computer if asked for permission? Mm -hmm. no, we're going to switch computers. That might help. Technology is fantastic until it doesn't work. Oh, there they are. I'm uh, Bernard Scanlon. Is that the, where it says Jim Wolf? Okay. <laughs> if you would please raise your right hand. I'm trying to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your full name for the record. Bernard J. Scanlon. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. Jacqueline. So this application uh, proposes to replace the existing south entry door in poor condition with a Therma True Traditions two light four panel flush white door. As the you know, application also proposes to replace the existing broken east entry door with a Therma True nine light two panel flush white door and to replace existing vinyl insert windows, just turn the volume. windows in white uh, to replace existing aluminum siding with vinyl siding and Cape Cod Craig and Cape Cod Craig, excuse me. Uh, staff is supportive of replacing non-appropriate materials, but note that new vinyl will not be appropriate and does not follow code and guidelines. The applicant is aware and would still like to bring forth this application for the commission's uh, comment and review. Uh, staff recommends that replacement of the siding be with either new wood, oral, or other appropriate cementitious siding. And staff recommends replacing the windows with windows from the approved window list. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Mr. Scanlon, do you have anything else to add? The only thing that I would adjust here, or not adjust, but this is kind of a four part request. And I'd like to be reviewed individually. Is that appropriate? Say yes to one, yes to two, yes to three, yes to four, or no to one, no to 
Is that appropriate? Rather than we, say yes or no to the whole thing. Yeah, we can we can look at each each item and then identify yes. which ones we would say are approvable, and we can split this application into two applications and put the stuff that we would approve under one and the stuff we wouldn't approve under a second one. If that would be Perfect. okay, great. So uh, for the commission, uh, I guess the qu first question is the entry door. Uh, looking for a Therma True Traditions two light four panel flush. It's an existing metal door right now. Uh, the new door would be a uh, metal door also in the style that we submitted, which is uh, two glass and then four panel. Okay. So for the commission, any, any issues with replacing a metal door with a metal door, simply changing the style from a, a full panel to a, a flush panel, no window. Yeah. Commissioner Thiel, Commissioner Foley, Commissioner Durst, anything against? Like for like. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we'll put that in the category of, of approvable. Uh, the second bullet point replace the existing broken east entry door with a Therma True Light two panel flush door. So the existing door is that metal as well, Mr. Scanlon? I believe so, but not sure. It's it's actually destroyed by the fire department be, to get entrance when a person passed away in there a month ago. Understood. So did, did they break the jam or did they bust the door? They kind of broke everything. <laughs> we have to replace it. We can't. It's 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 kind of nailed shut right so, now. So is it is it a metal door or is it a wood door? Apparently it's wood. So replace in kind. That is also that door is not visible from the street because it's, it's uh, east side. Does that make a difference? I, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. That's it. If you want to amend the application to be, to be a wood door, so like with like, we can put that in the approvable pile. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, the next item is existing vinyl insert windows with vinyl double hung windows. Another case of like for like. Any concerns? Well, with that? that's not quite like for like. Those okay. are inserts. The original windows, which were wood, are totally, I don't, yeah, they're gone. So they're insert windows, which I, I believe we all agree that insert windows aren't uh, appropriate window. We would like to take those the, all the pieces and parts out and put in new, complete new vinyl windows with trim and so forth. So is there existing wood trim still there with vinyl inserts or you be frame the whole thing out fresh with vinyl? Uh, we believe the exterior trim is gone. Uh, some of the jam material is still there, but you know how the inserts work. They leave parts there yep. and they just shove this piece of vinyl in, in the jam spaces. Yeah, so I, I don't think that's like for like. No, it's not really like for like. We want to do a better job. Well, I, I would argue vinyl windows are not a better job. We wouldn't allow vinyl windows to go in. Okay. okay. Can we switch that application then to the weather shield window that's on your list? Complete, re yeah. re complete replacement and removal of appropriate size and light. I think they're one over ones. Yeah. I would think so. Staff. Makes sense. Yeah. It's a proved window, certainly. Okay. All right. And the fourth bullet point, uh, aluminum siding is existing, looking to replace with vinyl siding. The, uh, the point there is, in, um, is that the metal uh, aluminum siding is in pretty tough shape. Um, there's vinyl two doors up. Matter of fact, you've got a picture of it on your screen right now. And there's vinyl across the street and there's vinyl down the street. And the vinyl and aluminum in my own mind are virtually the same thing. Uh, so we're, we're not, it's, it's almost replacing it like for like, but maybe better. Yeah, typically, 
in in the past when we've had this the the betterment most people choose is the the hardy board which we wouldn't we would typically not approve on a structure um but this being a, an odd case i guess we got to get a feel from the commission of would they be okay putting vinyl in lieu of of a, of a an aluminum or not i think on a previous project the house had a combination of aluminum and vinyl and we wouldn't let them put vinyl on yeah, you're right. That was over on Pearl. Yep. I recall that as well. So the, it the problem with this particular situation is the maybe a hardship situation because we can't just fix it. We can't just take it off and put hardy board up. We have to actually remove the vinyl remove what's underneath, which we're not sure of this minute, but we believe it's asphalt siding. Then we'd have to remove the sheathing because the sheathing are boards, not straight flat sheets of something or other. And the, the framing of the house, well, not a house. We don't know what it was originally, but the framing of the building is not uniform, meaning sheet material, which is what you need for the substrate for Party board and or uh, the other product that you recommend uh, needs to be clean and straight. And I'm not sure that we can do that. So the, what we're running into is a cost prohibition type situation. And then it's coming up with a product that it never was there in the first place. So we'd actually rebuilding it back to something that didn't exist. So it's kind of conflict. It's a conflict. So have you investigated to see what's underneath all these exterior siding applications? Well, we know it's the, it's, it's the, the metal on the outside. The next layer is, is, the, is a form of asphalt siding. And then from the inside, you can see that it's boards um, that are... Um, you can see the backside of the inside of the house. So you can see the boards, the sheathing. Now we don't know if there's something else in between that because we haven't, you know, we don't want to take everything off if we're not going to fix it. Um, so but when there's you said like you 10, they're like 10 inch or 12 inch boards. And then some are short, some are long. And, and the, again, the wood studs are not uniformly spaced. You, it's, it's an old building, but it's yeah, that's, kind of that's, peculiarly that's, built. That's to be expected. <laughs> yeah. Although I don't think I've ever seen this before. Maybe down in your area that's it's more true, but I don't think I've ever seen it before. Framed like this. And typically we would we would be able to approve selective demolition to kind of dig in to see what is there. Um that's something we, we could approve. But if you're if you're looking to to not replace it if if we can't approve vinyl siding, then we're kind of gotta figure out what we gotta do. Well, that's that's right. If we if we take something off, we will. You can't fix it because it's it's aluminum. You you bend it. Yep. And, you, and, well, and then we'll look. okay. Well, you but you know you're taking the aluminum off, right, or not? Only if we put the vinyl on. Oh, okay. So that's the condition of us letting you take the aluminum off. Is it, do you put vinyl on? Right, because that's not as critical of, of a substrate to put vinyl on to keep that straight. So Whereas why, the hardy board reflects everything. We all know that. Is there a small section somewhere in a in a little you know in inset section or something that could be removed, or is it is it all large runs? Um. Yeah, it's all straight runs. We don't because there's there's not very many windows. Consequently, you don't have the short pieces to take off. Right. Uh, you got it. You have to take it off at the top because you can't. You can't take it off at the bottom. Uh, we've. We've again. If it's, we think it might be this asphalt siding, which. I don't know if I've ever seen that in German Village. Oh yeah. yeah Where. I mean, there's, the asphalt siding is probably over something else, though. That it was. Oh, and, and, and right now, under something else too, like this. Right. 
you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll pull off the, the top layer, you'll find the asphalt, you pull that off. Sometimes you'll find wood, the original wood siding might be underneath that. We don't, we don't know until you start digging, but. No, we don't, we don't think there's wood siding because you would see that with the asphalt siding because that has to have a relatively decent substrate too, although it'll go over boards, but it won't go over lapped siding. If it was straight siding, maybe. So why do you want to take the aluminum off? Uh, it's in poor shape. It's got holes in it. It's bent. Uh, it's damaged. It's it's in. It doesn't look very good. So can you, buy so you it want to paint it? Paint it? Yep. No, yeah. we're not. That's not an option. Oh, okay. So you I mean, it's, think, so, but that would make I, it worse. I think, we're, I think, and maybe I'm wrong. I think what we're telling you is vinyl is not an option. Okay. You've kind of backed us into a corner. Okay. So we're going to then disapprove four and approve one, two, and three, maybe. Unless unless you are willing to try to figure out what's underneath and see if there's another option you would consider. Well, that's what I mean. Final. You'll disapprove it, and then we'll table it. So table item number four so we can do more of it investigation. I would, I would suggest that, yeah, that we continue. Okay, because we don't want to yeah. make it look worse. But we have, so we have to be careful how we investigate. Yep. We we've only we've had a sh like a month, but it's it's not easy to do. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think we can do that. So if we can get a motion, we could uh, split this into two, and then the two sections will be the first three bullet points, with bullet points two and three being uh, uh, revised per the applicant's request, a wood panel door, uh, for bullet point two and uh, approved list windows for bullet point three uh, and point four will be the second application B and we'll vote on those. We'll table the, the second application. So, Mr. Chairman, I move on item 19 GB 20 to 10 to 051 to make it part A and part B. Part A will be replacing the existing south entry door in poor condition with thermotype traditions two light four panel flush white door, which is like for like. Number two will be replace the existing entry door with a code with a uh, panel wood panel door that uh, complies with the guidelines. And number three is replace the existing vinyl insert windows with a proved replacement window. And which one did you say? Uh, the W. Um... Weather shield, weather shield. Yeah. Okay. Um, to be confirmed by by staff, and then part right. B will be replace the existing aluminum siding with vinyl siding. All right. Is there a second on that motion to split them? Second. All right. Take five seconds. We'll take the vote on that. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. And is there a motion to vote on the first three? Now yeah, we have on, on, on item 19 GB-20-1051, 720 South Lozille Street, Part A, I move to approve as just revised, I guess. Second. All right, any questions on the motion? Take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Durst? Aye. Ariel? Aye. Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. That motion passes. And I, Mr. Chairman, on item 19 GB-20-10-051-720 South LaZelle Street, Part B, I move to continue. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Durst? Aye. Burial? Aye. Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, staff, you still able to continue? Uh, yes, I am. Is other staff okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> okay. Commissioners, you guys good? Guys, yep. and woman, lady? Let's go. Thank woman. You. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't want to say girl. I mean, that's just not appropriate. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, item it's number 20. I, I know your employer's got sensitivity training. <laughs> we have it every year, multiple times. Uh, GB-20-10-052, 635 Mohawk Street. I have to recuse myself, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Looking for Mr. Leonard, Morbitzer, or Miranda. 
Here. All right. Uh, I'm looking for your video. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? Starting it now. There he is. There we go. All right. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Will Leonard. Thank you. Jacqueline. This application proposes the addition of a 14 foot by 4 inch uh, by a 13 foot porch per the submitted plan. The porch does not require a variance. The applicant would like to expand the existing brick path for the plan in the front yard and relay existing city sidewalk within the same location. And the applicant would like to relay existing raised brick edge below the wrought iron fence with all pavement to be laid on an aggregate base and add new planting per plan. The applicant would like the addition of a bluestone patio and brick pathway at the rear yard and add limestone curbing. And with the addition of a four inch cedar or four foot, excuse me, cedar springing fence around AC condenser and add plantings. Uh, and the applicant would also like to remove the existing pergola and the patio pathing. Uh, so at the business meeting, commissioners did ask for clarification if the porch cutout will count towards the house square footage or whether the applicant is just using a space from the first floor uh, to calculate that square footage. And the commissioners also want confirmation about the underlayment proposed for underneath the patio uh, and noted that the applicant will need to make sure that the drainage will occur on the property. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, for the applicant, anything to add? Regarding the cutout in the, in the house, that is not contributing to the lot coverage. It's, a, it's actually kind of a jog in the building. Um, Look at the site plan. Yep. I was under the impression that it, if you have a second floor above it, it would contribute to the lot coverage. And I don't have a photo to show. I believe it, it, it does not have a second story. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for the commission, questions or comments? Issues with the coverage. So is the existing lot coverage 49 less than 50%? I believe it is, yes. And then for confirmation, you're going to be uh, on an aggregate base, uh, not having concrete underlayment underneath the patio, correct? That is correct. Okay. And as far as drainage goes, looking at your uh, your lot plan, uh, assuming you're going to have a lot of that patio draining into the groupings of shrub trees on the north and south ends of the patio, is the intent to that? Yeah, that, and uh, we'll probably have um, drains. Um, They'll either be um, outlatted on site, subgrade, or they will they will be taken out to Mohawk in the existing downspout system. But um, I think most of the basically the, it, we're not changing the existing condition of the the drainage plan um, too badly. There will be landscape plan or you know landscape beds existing to accept the water. Okay. Yeah, the intent is not to create additional runoff into the, the village sewer systems already. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> Pretty taxed as it is. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Commission? If there is not, is there a motion? I move on application 20 GV 20 10 052 655 Mohawk Street to approve the application as submitted. Second. With the clarification that the patio will not be on a concrete base. Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Thiel is recused. 
Commissioner Durst. Aye. Burial. Aye. Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. On to item number 21, GV-20-10-053-165 East Deschler. Looking for Aaron Borchers or someone from Urban Architecture. There's Aaron, it looks like. Steve Hurt. All right. Uh, they would both please raise your right hand, whoever's going to be speaking. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your full name for the record. Steve Hurt with Urban Order Architecture. And Aaron, I think your your uh, microphone was muted. Yep, you're still muted. <laughs> Aaron, I should be unmuted now. Aaron Borchers, homeowner. There we go. Thank you very much. All right, Jacqueline. Okay, this application uh, proposes to add an addition of a partial second floor to a previously approved porch enclosure. The proposed second floor will include the same detailing as what was previously approved with recessed smooth cement board panels and trim and Marvin aluminum clad windows and doors. And the applicant is also proposing a simple iron railing. So the commissioners have requested some existing photos or want to know what the existing building porch area currently looks like and are asking for a revised section detail to show the full two story section and how this will tie into the wall below. Uh, the commissioners noted at the business meeting that this appears to be very close to tucking under the eaves. So there's a request to show this detail as well. And staff notes that a new second story enclosure on a contemporary porch may be appropriate citing the standards for alteration and contemporary design for alteration to a property shall not be discouraged when such alteration does not destroy significant historical, architectural, or cultural material, and its design is compatible with the size, scale, color, material, and character of the property, its environment, and the surrounding contributing properties. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, for the applicant, do you have anything to add? Um, just that the the existing porch was built in 99, so that is, you know, I think one of the reasons that we were allowed to enclose it in the first place. Um, we are going to maintain that that strong roof line around that first floor piece and then have this second floor piece, um, you know, appear as a, um, you know, sort of sleeping porch kind of piece. And we are doing a very low slope flat roof that will tuck up under the exposed rafter tails. And so we'll be maintaining the existing stop gutters on the uh, main house as well as that rear section. Um, and the balcony railing is just, we want that to be just as minimal as we possibly can get it to be um, because it does sort of interfere with a existing second floor window, which is existing um that's about it okay questions comments from the commission my only comment would be the west east west elevation like the first two windows going from right to left match the rhythm of the porch below and then it falls apart and i think that ought to i think the second floor should support or be supported reflect what's going on in the first floor. So the, the the last two windows line up with the windows below. Yep. And then the next window is just the, a, a repeat of that. Um, so those those divisions between the windows are all equal. <clears throat> um, and because I because we've got that roof line and that overhang there, I think that it that it continues. It could work the way we've got it pr proposed. I, I I don't think. I think the rhythm on the first floor needs to match the rhythm on this. Or the, the rhythm on the second floor needs to match the rhythm on the first floor. That's that is that is. I think that's required. Okay. Ned, is there a reason why one on the west and not the south elevation? 
<laughs> South Elevation's, uh, yeah, South Elevation's pulled back, um, okay. and and it's more utilitarian on that side. Um, I think it would be nicer if it did, but it's I don't find it as mandatory as as this definitely does on this side. Just to, just to see where your head was at. Yeah. Can you say that again? I'm sorry, I missed it. The the backside is more utilitarian and it's pulled back. Yeah. Okay, I agree. I just want to note that uh, Brent Foley has to leave at this point. Thank you. So for the applicant, <clears throat> is that a change you'd like to make or would you like to proceed with the way it's shown in the drawings currently? Um, does anyone else feel strongly about that? Because we still have the, the, you know, the, the rhythm of the panel versus window. But if other people feel that way, um, you know, we could eliminate that third window. I'm just looking at the view from uh, Google Street View right now. I'm trying to see if I'm able to see that those panels. And yeah, the rhythm of the panels below is fairly strong. So I agree with Ned. It should telescope up. Yeah, I think you're going to just catch it from the street. <clears throat> but if I couldn't see it, then I, I would I wouldn't be worried about it. But I I, I can. Aaron, do you have comments about that? I, I could be comfortable if we needed to remove that third window, Steve, and, and carry the same panel design up. Personally, I feel as designed, it's a better view from the street. You, you see very little of this, but you see the upper portion more. There's a, there's a brick kind of courtyard wall and tree that block much of the lower view. So I think our, our belief was seeing more of kind of a sleeping porch look with more glass um, was, the, was the better view when you think about, you know, down at street grade is much lower. So when you, when you look up towards the house, you're, you're almost at a 45 degree angle and the, the small portion you'll see is, is the upper section. From the street, I don't believe there's any way to actually see the kitchen windows below and the windows above, given the angle that you're you're looking at. I mean, if this was a sleeping porch, it would be all be glazed, and it would match the rhythm on the first floor. And, and I would just make the statement of, again, I'm, I'm looking at Google Street View, and you get a clear shot of it, basically through the neighbor's porch, right to that back as you as you as you're walking and driving past. I, I think it will. Be, you'll you'll catch. Basically, looking at the elevation below the windows is what's blocked, but when you see the windows and up is what you see from from the street view. So I'm, I'm, I'm in Ned's court on this one. I'm comfortable with that revision if needed, Steve. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we can we can eliminate the third window on the west elevation. And match the rhythm of the first floor. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Any other comments, concerns, the commission? If there are none, is there a motion? On item 21 GV 20 10 053 165 East Destler Street, I move to approve as amended with the east elevation rhythm on the second floor matching the east elevation rhythm on the first floor. Um, and the, whether that's panels or glass, I, I'm not worried. I just want the rhythm to match. Second. Any questions on the motion? Yeah, I apologize. That was more commentary than motion at the end. <laughs> All right, uh, take the vote. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Burial? Aye. Foley has left. Uh, chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you much. Uh, do we have somebody here for 79 Thurman Avenue? 
Yes, I am here. All right. Uh, so item number 22, GV-20-1054, 79th Thurman Avenue. Uh, applicant, please raise your right hand. Uh, other right hand. There we go. There we go. Oh. <laughs> uh, do, you do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And please state your name, Mr. Spiegel. Uh, Jim Spiegel. And Mr. Lonas. Uh, Matt Lomas. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application involves adding a covered open air stair exit stair to the southwest side of the building for the purpose of expanding possible tenants. The stair and railings will be galvanized chalk, and two options are proposed, including option one, which would be a screen wall to match the current west wall articulation, and the building elements to match the existing building, the stone base, the stucco wall, the cornice trim, and detail to match existing with the flat roof, green from city park with a parapet. Option two would be a screen wall to be aluminum curtain wall with the finish to be black and low slope to the roof, and the roof also to be black standing seam metal. The commissioners uh, have asked at the September 22nd business meeting if the stair could possibly be added to the southeast corner to reduce the visibility, and staff recommendation is that the new stair should be minimized visually as much as possible. Thank you, Jacqueline. For the applicants, anything to add? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, the current building configuration only has one, that drawing there shows it well, uh, one internal egress stair. So it limits this building to only having 29 occupants or a business use on the second floor. Um, the Weiler company has a potential tenant that is um, able to utilize this space. Uh, this space was uh, occupied for roughly 17 years um, by a law firm. It has set vacant for the last three years because of uh, only being able to be a business use or uh, limited to the number of occupants on that floor uh, with one exit stair. Uh, with this new potential tenant, um, they can occupy this space uh, if a, an additional exit stair is provided. Uh, we selected this location on the on the web understanding that it is against City Park um, in the sense of the, the back addition was added uh, in the uh, late uh, 1980s, early 1990s. Um, and we can match that architectural wall or the, the, the articulation of the west wall um, by moving it out. Um, an option, an option was uh, looking at the west side of the building. Uh, our concern there was there's a large electrical transformer uh, for the uh, this building as well as the building to the south. Uh, there is a requirement, spatial requirement around that for them to have access to, as well as the underground line, which we're not exactly sure which direction they go and how far they extend out past the. Um, Transformer. Uh, so with that, uh, if we align the either option here to the west, the east side of the building, we will affect uh, more windows uh, in that location. We'll affect two sets of windows uh, versus the west side. We affect one window. Uh, understanding in the um, German village. Uh, guidelines that uh, any addition needs to not be similar to the the structure uh, is why we gave the curtain wall system. It, it's one that we we like better um, in the sense of how the juxtaposition between the building and the stair, uh, the materiality, uh, the color choices uh, for that would be to match the windows of the south building and the canopies of the south building. Um, this again would be an open air stair. Uh, main purpose was to get uh, potential other tenants uh, on the second floor. Thank you. Questions, comments from the commission. I, my only comment, it, it, well, two. One is, I, I think whatever you do on the east side, you need to do on the south side. Whether whatever that open work is or nothing, okay. Um, certainly, the the replication of the um, west wall is would not be appropriate. 
<laughs> but I, I think the two sides need to be treated the same way, whatever that is. I would agree. If we look at an option two, uh, would be the curtain wall. If we have the curtain wall uh, on the south side uh, of the of the new stair. Um, we are limited on space. Uh, we are we are right there in the sense of the uh, parking lot and the edge of curb uh, for the required uh, distance for landing at the end of the last tread. Uh, would it be possible to uh, not have a door? on that south side, but we could do a curtain wall from the top portion down, but leave the door at the end of the air uh, landing and not put a door at that location. I'm not, I'm not understanding what you're saying. Uh, so the south elevation, we have no trouble with adding the curtain wall there uh, and then closing it. Uh, the concern is if you zoom in on that elevation right there, or that the top elevation, uh, the the landing at the, the bottom of the stairs, uh, we are within six inches. Uh, and again, this hasn't been surveyed, site surveyed by me, but not a true. We are really close to not having the appropriate landing depth. Mm -hmm. So by adding the curtain wall system in, the curtain wall is going to be six inches. The swing pattern of the door is going to swing out into the parking lot, even if it's an egress door. So I, if it's possible to just add the curtain wall and not provide a door at the bottom of the stairs, would that be acceptable? So, so my question is the curtain wall is glazed. It is. Yes, it was actually, oh. yes, yes. Oh. Is a glass is a glass. Yes. I, I assume that since it was an open stairway that you guys were just not even glazing it, you're just putting curtain wall up to, yeah. to visually um, separate it. Sorry. Yeah. No, it was, the west wall was going to have glaze. And if the south wall was not, we could we could put the curtain wall in the south elevation and no glazing. Um, I'm yeah. If you're comfortable with that, then that's something I, that I have. I have no problem with not putting a door down at the bottom. I, okay. I assumed it was unheated and unheated and unglazed space to begin with. It, it is unheated. It is unheated. Um, yeah. If it's something where you guys would have without the glazing, um, I think it would save our client. Uh, a substantial amount of money. It's I hate to tell you this. I assumed it wasn't glazed. I mean, okay. I, I, you know, I mean, to, to be honest with you, putting glass and all that, your heat build up in the summer is going to be huge. Right, right, right. That's why the south side is going to be open. So if we can eliminate the glazing altogether and just put the curtain wall system up on the south side, uh, we would we'd be uh, willing to do that. I'm okay with that. I'm good with it. I'm good too. Yep. All right. Uh, looking back the uh, the application, uh, I think that covered everything on it. Any further questions or comments? I think option uh, option two with the modifications of removing the glazing and making sure we have the curtain wall system mullion wise at least on the south side. I think that wraps it up. You guys good with yeah. that? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> okay, item 22GV 2010-54, I move to approve as submitted with option two, um, with the modification that the aluminum curtain wall extends also on the south elevation, and that glazing is not required. Thank you. Second. Thank you for a second. We got Commissioner Farrell's got the second. Take the vote. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Farrell. Aye. Foley is uh, left. Uh, chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we only got two left of the of the agenda here. Staff, you still good for these last two? Uh, I'm okay. Is other staff okay? okay? Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Item 23, GV-20-10-056, 261 Lansing Street E. Looking for uh, Jeffrey Sisk. I see you there. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Jeffrey Sisk. 
Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application uh, proposes to replace the existing six foot cedar privacy fence, enclosing a small 16 by 33 foot rear yard with a similar wood fence that encloses the 11 by 33 foot gravel driveway. The applicant would like to incorporate a sliding wood driveway gate. The applicant has found a 1978 documentation that a uh, gate listed as a sliding vertical cedar gate was formally, <clears throat> excuse me, present, but the owner at that time proposed. Uh, the, the addition of the current privacy fence to bisect the rear yard. The applicant would like to restore the rear yard to its original configuration. The applicant has also submitted a photo of 1978 documentation, as well as a sketch diagram um, in response to commissioner feedback. Uh, staff would recommend returning yard to original configuration with any modifications, so that return could be submitted to staff. Right. Uh, applicant, have anything else to add? No, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, especially when once we found the original documentation, we were uh, enthusiastic about returning the fence back to the other side of the driveway only because at the, at the current time, uh, our backyard feels extraordinarily crowded. Um, we moved into a home a year ago that has a small that has a small brick patio in the backyard that effectively eliminates all of the green space on the property. Uh, and so this will allow us to extend the, the property line, extend the fence to the edge of the property line and actually incorporate a little bit more green space into the property. Okay. Uh, Jacqueline, do you have a copy of that 70 documentation? Yeah, that should be, I think, towards the end of the materials. I guess if you want to scroll down a little bit. Yeah. This is Belkis. Um, there are only four pages here. I'm not seeing anything else yep, on this photo. That's all I have, too. Let me see if I can't get it up real fast. Okay. Hey, Jeff, do you remember uh, a sliding gate with an overhead bar here? I don't. Yeah, I, I kind of do, but I'm not sure it's here. Okay. Jacqueline, if you need me to email that to you again, I can. Uh, yeah, that'd be great just in case. I'm just navigating to the folder at this moment. So I think you can have it. It's just a matter of getting it to the top. Well, while they're figuring that part out from the commissioners, any comments, thoughts? on the sliding gate. I don't have any issues. Nope. Jeff for Teresa. Nope, I'm good. Yep, seems fine. Okay. Uh, I think uh Jack let me just get that make sure we have that in the in the record, but uh it sounds like there's no heartache from the nope. commission on the application as proposed. So is uh, there a motion? This is... um, item 23, GB 20-10-56, 261 Lansing Street East. Um, I move to approve as submitted. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? If none, then we will, I will, I will say, make sure that the, uh, Final gate details information goes to staff. Yep. Cut sheets and anything else that goes with it. All right. Uh, Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. And then the last item on the agenda, there are four from previous that we went past, uh, but we'll finish the last one up and go back. Uh, it's going to be item number 24, GV-20-10-055. It's conceptual for 357 Jackson Street. I need to recuse myself, so Commissioner Durst, if you can take over for that. Okay. Hi, neighbors. Hey, commissioners, I would like to know, I think the applicant has communicated they would like request for action on this one instead of conceptual. Okay. That's correct. 
Okay, and Mr. Gurney, you are present? Yes. Okay. Can you raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And can you state your name for the record? William Gurney. All right, Jacqueline. Okay, this application proposes the addition of a dormer at the rear southwest of the house to match and mirror the dormer on the opposite side. And that uh, existing dormer was originally installed in about 1980. So the purpose of the second dormer is to add livable space and also symmetry to match that existing dormer. Uh, the applicant notes that there is a higher roof line at the front of the house, narrow lot lines, mature trees, fencing, and a garage that will all help to assist in limiting the view of the dormer from the street in the alley. And then the commissioners, I think at the last business meeting, have requested any possible photos facing on, but we're thought maybe the existing photos might be okay that the applicant has submitted. Um, Mr. Gurney, do you have anything you want to add? Um, no, I want to thank you guys for all sticking around tonight. I know I was the last one on the list. Um, we had a conceptual review of this done in, I believe, last December, and it was approved pending um, drawings. Uh, drawings have been submitted for this application. This was not supposed to be submitted as a conceptual review, but for us to move forward with the project. Yeah, I think at the uh, business meeting, was there some concern about its visibility from the street, given that there's a yard on the side? I was wondering whether the 1980 dormer was approved specifically because it was not on the yard side. Uh, there is a yard side. There is a, um, a privacy fence that is there. The, the, it's a very narrow lot line, as you can see from the pictures. The dormer is not going to extend past the current um, structure. And it is going to be guarded um, from the front of the house is higher two story um, front of the house and the uh, roof line will be below the uh, roof line of the existing two story house. So there'd be very little um, visibility from the, the, uh, the front of the house. It's also a very narrow street on Jackson as well. Uh, so there's not a lot of room for people to move around and kind of see. So, so can we go see the drawings because we didn't get drawings. Yeah, they're they're there, Ned. I I didn't get them in mine. Huh. Oh, I'm sorry. God, jeez, I'm sorry. <laughs> they magically appeared. <laughs> Ain't technology wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> so what I what I want to know is that the dormer is set back from that back corner of the house, and it is okay. Yeah, my, my goal is to exactly mimic the previous dormer on the opposite side. Uh, so symmetrically, it'll be the same. Materials will be the same. Color will be the same. Uh, and trim, trim will. Uh, top gutters. Well, the top gutter will stay on the, the uh, lower part of the roof. And I believe during the conceptual review, you asked about the gutters and you would like, you wanted to see a half round on that, um, the new addition. It says gutter and trim to match existing. Yeah, well, the ex okay, so the existing on the one side is a, a K stop. Um, and, and during the conceptual review, uh, it was pointed out that that was not what you wanted to be done on this side. It would okay. be consistent, but, but, I, but I will, I will put whatever gutter on there that, that, that you would like to have see um, for approval. So I, I would just say match what's on the other side if that's what you're going for. Yes, that's what I would like to do. Um, the, the, during the conceptual review, it was brought up, though. That's the only reason I, I wanted to make sure that we were clear. Yeah, I remember a discussion about that. I don't I can't remember why we were focusing on half round. Probably because the rafter tails are angled. OK, yeah. And that typically gets a half round. So I, I guess we're saying the K gutter on the other side is incorrect. <laughs> so that's a good point. I would go with a half round and eventually change your K gutter <laughs> to a half round someday. <laughs> <laughs> I'd respectfully ask to, to keep the cake gutter on this side and, and not have to change the other side because uh, that, you know, who knows when uh, that would happen. But yeah, I, I, I and mean, to be honest with you, nobody's going to know, but our, but they're right on the money when they say when it's not a plum gutter cut. Well, I know when it's not a plum um, um, raptor cut, it's a it's a half round. Okay. 
and we are going to say that the the half round and the stop on uh, below the uh, the dormer are going to yeah. be is kept. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, I missed the drawings. That that I mean, I, I I think it looks fine to me. I mean, I don't yeah, I don't know why it didn't happen the first time around, but yeah. You had no drawings the first time around. You just said, so I only submitted for conceptual review before I paid the architect to do drawings. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, smart. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what I, to me. It looks okay. Yeah, I guess yeah. the only concern was how visible it was from the lawn side, and yeah, it looks like it'd be barely visible. Yeah, and it's and it's pulled back, you know, nominally from the the corner, and you know, the only thing it's not in compliance is the fact that it. It's the ridge of the original house, but the damn dormer that's already there does too. So okay. Okay. Motion. So we so it's this is uh item number twenty-four, GB dash twenty dash ten dash o dash o five five move to approve as submitted. Um yep. And with, with half round gutters. Yep. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. Uh, let's, let's take a vote. Commissioner Ferial. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. And that's it. And okay, I guess the acting chair votes aye as well. Motion <laughs> passes. Hey, We're done. I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you guys sticking around tonight. Thank you. Thank you. You gonna get this built yet this year? <laughs> we're hoping <laughs> at the very least i want to get it roofed in and sealed for for the winter and then i'll then then we're good to go i'm, I'm praying my painter shows up yet <laughs> <laughs> my contract is a personal friend uh, that helps me out with these projects and uh, he, he assures me that we can get it done before snow flies yeah he's probably right yep all right guys i appreciate you have a great night nice. me too. so did that guy just predict we're gonna get snow this year <laughs> <laughs> snow will fly whether it lands on the ground and sticks is another uh issue all right all right well, have a great night guys thank you much all right chairs back just do a quick recap of the of the four items that uh we passed over and do applicants not being there so item number five seven six mohawk street all right one for mohawk street uh number six one nine two east beck street one nine two east beck street all right, number 12, 121 East Frankfurt Street. Or number 17, 358, 356 Beck Street. Uh, these are not here. Uh, Jacqueline, can we just do one bulk motion to uh, continue all four of these? Uh, I believe so. I'm not sure of the precedent about that, but that sounds okay to me. It, the intent is good. All right. Is there a motion <laughs> for f number five, number six, number twelve, and number seventeen? Yeah, I, I move uh, to continue item five, GV twenty oh eight thirty two seven ninety six Mohawk Street. Item number six, GV twenty dash ten dash thirty nine one ninety two East Beck Street. Um, item twelve, GV twenty ten zero forty five one twenty one East Frankfurt Street. And GV item 17 GV 20 10 049 358 comma 356 Beck Street. Second. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote, Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Motion passes. Is there a meeting to adjourn? I so move. Second. Second. All right, Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Durst. Aye. Ariel, aye. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. We are adjourned. Jeff, you look like you got green hair. <laughs> Who me? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, I've got a green. I'm, I'm, the, I've got a green screen behind me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It looks good, I, buddy. Well, you know, I, I, I didn't realize it was going to 